Hey guys, welcome back to the Atle podcast. Today is episode number 69. We finally reached the funny number. And with me today on this quite packed episode with regard to reviews, don't have a lot of news and trailers to talk about, is the one and only Joe Paulella. How's it going, Joe? Um, not too bad, thank you. How are you? Um, I was okay before the football match. Then unfortunately, I had a bit of a rough tackle. Uh, the studs in football, I was telling you before, Joe, man, they are killers mm -hmm. sometimes. When you take the yeah. ball and the opposition player takes the, the takes your ankle, <laughs> always really painful, always a painful one. Um, yeah. But I'll put ice on it after after the podcast. Hopefully it won't bruise too much. Any 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 rugby recently, Joe? No, luckily my season is finished. We finished last season, what, now two weeks ago? So I, I won't be playing for the foreseeable future, at least. Um, we'll start pre-season, I believe, in August. And then season starting again in September. So no actually playing rugby. Just now, just gym and stuff like that. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. What do you do at the gym usually, Joe? Cardio? Um, I, I, always, I always do a bit of cardio and a bit of weightlifting. At the moment, just going through like as many like strength lifts as I can. Just as heavy as possible for five reps, three sets kind of thing. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. I'm doing a mixture as well right now. I mean, I have football for cardio usually, so I don't do too much cardio when mm -hmm. I'm training. Mostly weights. Um, I do a mixture. Uh, chest, shoulders, arms, yeah. and legs. I'm missing one. Chest, shoulders, arms, legs. Yeah, chest, the shoulders, biceps arms. and the triceps, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, all good apart from that. It's been a, been a really busy week. Been a really busy week, uh, to yeah. be honest with you. Oh, my camera. One second, because I have the box on. There we go. It's been a really busy week with regard to work, man. Work has been a killer this week. I, I, uh, I miss when I had, I miss when I had the student teacher taking over <laughs> one of my classes. That was really good. I could post on Instagram all day, every day, and I could do as much as I wanted to. And good to have you on, Franco. How's it going, my friend? Hello, guys. Hello, guys. It's good. It's good. How's it going? We're still in the introduction, Franco. So yeah. we're all Gucci, all Gucci. So what what are you doing? What are you doing with Instagram during class? Why the students are forbidden to use Instagram? No, class? when I had my when I had my student teacher taking over a class in those those lessons where I was free, ah. I could do a bit of advertising <laughs> for our for our podcast. Unfortunately, true, no. true, true. I, have you told? But have you told them though? What is the Atlet podcast all about? I have not yet. I have not yet. Unfortunately, I haven't so... told my students either because I always avoid mentioning anything dealing with. They do find it. Yes, they do find it sometimes. I, I hear them whispering, "Sir, it's my turn to sit on the podcast." It's my, it's my turn. <laughs> I hear them whispering, and then you have you have the brave one who's like, "Sir, is it true? I have a podcast." The brave one always asks in class, uh, and I'm like, "And and what do you say?" <laughs> no, I'm like, uh, and then I'm like, you know. We have the Adler podcast, it's all about movies, <laughs> all about series, all about video games. And then I tell them what we're going to talk about that week. So, for example, today, I didn't. But if they did ask me, I would have told them that we have a lot of series to talk about. I, I spend basically every free moment of this week watching series, <laughs> to be honest with you, because a lot of new series came out. Uh, then we have a trailer. We have a trailer for Joker Folly Ade, which is an interesting one. I think it will lead to an interesting discussion. Um, we have another trailer, but this time it's a game, mm, game, not really a gameplay trailer. It's the story trailer for a game that we're talking about Sto Star Wars Outlaws there, uh, which according to Forbes, and I'm quoting Forbes here, looks shockingly bad. We'll discuss that later on. And we'll get into the whole controversy about the different editions and uh, Ubisoft's scummy practices over there. Um, then we have some CinemaCon news. I'll skim through that news, and I'll let you guys pick out anything that interests you, and we'll do it that way. Uh, and then we'll conclude, as we always do, which are reviews. So we've got a review for Wicked Little Letters. Me and Franco watched that. Did you watch Wicked Little Letters, Joe? Uh, I haven't seen it yet, no. It's been out here. It was out about a month ago in the cinema over here. Yes, yes. It. Yes, I never went to watch it in the cinema. Uh, I couldn't find the time when, when it was out. Um, uh, so we'll review that. Uh, we'll, I'll uh, review the Fallout TV series. Don't know if anyone has started it here, right? Don't think anyone I'm, has I'm midway through the fourth episode. 
Oh, you I haven't started okay. it yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then we'll have a good discussion about it uh, later on in the reviews. Um, Joe, luckily, got to watch Civil War. I'm looking forward to hearing <sighs> for Alex Carlin Civil War. A bit, a bit of, a bit of, a bit of a taste, a bit of a taste. Joe, what uh, did you think of uh, of the uh, movie? I, I have, a, I have a lot to say. Let's see what the only, the only taste I'm gonna give you. Uh, but lot, a lot as in good stuff, bad stuff, mid stuff. Uh, no, this is, this is, this is the reason why I didn't even put my review up on Letterbox yet, because I know that you two would go and read it, and you'd get a little hint. <laughs> of what I'm thinking. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. Nice, 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 nice. No spoilers. And I had, then. I had, I had, I had to ruminate on it a little bit as well. Good, good stuff, good stuff, okay. good stuff. And then, Franco, I know you have a couple of reviews as well. You have Sol dell'Avenire. Sol dell'Avenire, but I think it's called, in English, it's called A Better Tomorrow, uh, Nanni, Moretti, Nanni Moretti's uh, latest, which I also sent an email. Hopefully, we'll have him on the podcast. Who knows? <laughs> it would be a great uh, thing to have. Um, not a great thing, a great uh, director to have on the podcast. And last year of darkness, which is a documentary, right? Yes, yes. I don't. I'm not. To be honest, funnily enough, I'm not sure whether it is actually a documentary or not. It's a bit. Uh, I know it's moody for sure. It's very, very moody. Um, it reminded me a lot when I lived back in Korea, and I'll tell you why later on when I like uh, when I explain and review. Good it. stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. So that's the plan for today. So viewers and listeners. Let us know in the comment section below any of these topics I've mentioned which have piqued your interest. Let us know in the comment section below. And as we always do, we're going to start off the podcast now by talking about what we've been up to and what we've been but, watching. Franco. But first, do chat with us, guys. Subscribe. Uh, follow us on, on uh, Instagram. Like our posts, please. It's really important that you like our posts whenever we put up the animating uh, thumbnails and whatnot so that we know that you are engaging with us as well uh, a lot and of people, also franco a lot of people mm -hmm. have been telling me franco they really like the animated thumbnails so that's really good stuff yeah, really yeah. really good stuff no no and I, as much like it don't forget to like it <laughs> <laughs> exactly and and as much as possible as much as possible um uh, yeah like uh, you guys sent me like some some expressions you know it's like eh, yes, you know. yes 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 <laughs> Weekly, weekly expressions, uh, according to the shit we've been watching, whether it's good or bad, <laughs> whether it's good or bad. Thumbs down if it's bad. Happy face if it's good. That's, that's what we should do, yeah. a quick selfie as soon as we finish whatever we'll we like, watch. <laughs> yeah, we'll be like, <laughs> this would sure, be for Immaculate. <laughs> oh man, we haven't gone to watch Immaculate yet, Franco. We have to do no, that. No, no, we haven't. We haven't. We have to. You're going. You're going. Uh, midweek, I cannot. But that's the only midweek. Thing. You can't. Uh, no, think, no, no. I think that's the only free time I'll have in the coming weeks. So the weekends, coming weekends are so busy for me. They're crazy. Between, I have lots of stuff going on right now, like, um, you know, personal stuff. So it's going to be tough finding the time. Really, really tough finding the time. Um, but midweek, I might slip in a couple of hours to go watch immaculate after work i'll try and do it that way hey guys excited to enjoy 69 with you all tonight and i am excited bruce to have you <laughs> here with us in our 69 as well you know you know what we should say like if we have our favorite our favorite erotic movie since it's this 69 if we have mm. like a <laughs> put me on the spot there <laughs> okay so oh, quickly what, what, what constitutes an erotic movie i'm not too into erotic movies that to be honest handmaiden, handmaiden. handmaiden. Uh, probably, no, i would easy. say probably the the best one and poor things poor things was quite erotic as well eh? i suppose so but like are we talking like because like you have the whole like actual genre of itself of like an erotic thriller you know they were very uh, like, big, uh, like ba ba basic instinct, basic instinct, yeah, instinct. Yeah. i like basic instinct for example as well but yeah. I would always put Handmaiden because I think Handmaiden is one of the best ever made movies ever. So yeah, that's always Handmaiden. going to be my number and, one. And there's, pretty, there's, pretty tough to beat. There's also I would, but you know, I mean, no, I was going to say I was going to say, uh, oh my god, what was his latest movie? Eyes Wide Shut. Yes, Bruce is right. Eyes Wide Shut is a nice. Eyes Wide Shut. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. What was his last movie? Park Park Chan -wook? Uh, okay. Park Chan Wook. Um, uh, with, 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 with Tang oh, Wei. Oh, uh, no, um, decision to leave. Decision to leave. Ah, ha, 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 ha. But speaking of that an erratic, 
But it's, it's not, it's, not it's, too much sexual stuff going on. I know there's a heavy no, and, sexual and the tension. Sub, the subtext. The subtext is very yes, sexual. Yes, yes, yes. Sp- very speaking, heavy sexual tension. Yeah. Speaking of Tang Wei, there's also Last Caution. I don't know if you've ever seen it. Last I've never watched Last with, Caution. Uh, it's I been on it, my playlist, on my, my uh, list, watch list for years. Never got around watching it. And the trivia there is that uh, apparently because of that movie, Tang Wei had to leave China. And that's why she's oh. married with a Korean director who she's working a lot with him. Not Park Chan, okay? It's another Korean director. Um, I was going to also suggest not basic, basic instinct, erotic, but so fun because it's so corny. You know, you know, it's a very, yeah. ho- you know, it's a very hoiven uh, um, movie. And uh, I would say I, I'm remembering. I think something. Uh, uh let me remember it but in the meantime you can continue guys but i know it was a, a movie called something blue 36 or f- i forgot mm. no, i don't know i don't know franco shall we get into it man now why franco looks it up joe what have you been up to this week what have you been watching um watching i managed to watch civil war as you guys revealed and i'll get to you <laughs> later in the show um <laughs> in terms of series i started fallout and i'm three and no four I'm halfway through the fourth episode, I believe. Mm-hmm. 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 Um, and keeping up with Shogun. I, I, and so we just don't um, give too long to it. All I say about Shogun is it's just constantly the gift that keeps on giving. It yep. is a show where seemingly just... And it's something I've, I've kind of realized about the releasing weekly model. That it, it feels like now there are TV shows that are made to release as like binge watches, like something like Fallout, and something that's made to release weekly like shogun and the main episode is every single episode in shogun ends on such like a question of intrigue about what's going to yeah. happen next yep. whereas at least so far the first episodes in you know, a fallout do not yeah. there aren't the, there aren't like these big burning questions of like what's going to come next and every episode picks up exactly where the last one left off like yeah. probably if you got every episode of fallout and you just drag them into like a premiere pro project and line them up all together they would just flow as one by like, yeah. ten hour film. I guess seven and seven to eight. There's a big like what what. Yeah. I mean, like, I haven't I haven't seen I haven't seen those ones yet. But like, but at the like same time, the first episode, it was like the yeah, first episode, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you were like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, hundred percent. I need 100%. I need to get on with my se- TV series game because I haven't seen anything. Mm-hmm. Um, by the way, I don't know if I can share the screen, but I found the movie that I was uh, talking about. What's it called? It's called? I'll share it. I'm gonna show. No, I'm gonna share it here. So let's see. Betty Blue. It's called Betty Blue. Can you see it, guys? Yes. Yeah, I can. Yes. It's up. Yeah, Betty Blue. Quite a high rating on IMDb, and uh, a 1986 title, and it's a pretty. Uh, even the end. The end is quite. Uh, quite a. It's a, it's a downbeat ending, but then there's also that sweetness as well. In it. Mm. Yeah, that's it. By the way, guys, we have to also, <laughs> because we had opinions on the trailer of Speak No Evil. Speak No Evil, yeah. Phil Fat. Oh, Phil Fat. oh God. I just brought it up, and I also brought up the Maxine trailer. Did I notice I left those two off? The Maxine sure. trailer. No, Maxine, we no did. Evil. We reacted already. No, no. We, did, we, did, we did Maxine for sure. We did Maxine. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm gonna forget that. We did. Oh, we did Maxine last week. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was popped up on my IMDb, and I opened the link as well. So I yeah, speak no evil as well with regard to trailers, because uh, obviously Joe has a lot of opinions about it. No, no, even me, even me. Huh? So... Okay, okay. Bro. We'll get into that later on, man. And I think uh, we're gonna we're gonna be in agreement, me and Joe, on this one a lot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything else, Joe? You've been up to? Uh, apart from that, no. I'm kind of now like now that I've watched like I guess the big releases of the month, I'm now just waiting for challenges to come out on the 26th. Mm, but yeah. that, that that feels like far away now. So I I, I, I literally looked like at the weekend I'm like ah oh, let me see if I can go to the cinema to watch anything. And I was just like I can't. Nice <laughs> <laughs> Franco, what about you? No, oh, I've like you said, I've watched Wicked Little Letters with my father, an enjoyable one hour thirty minutes, was it? One hour thirty mm-hmm. minutes, right? One hour thirty minutes, yeah. Um uh, again, watched Nando Moretti's latest. At f- the mo- I was halfway between uh 
like 3.5 and and a 4 with that movie then then i tell you the final the final rating but it's uh, because it's very it's very nostalgic and then i also saw um i i used to i you i follow a lot uh, I don't know if other guys know it. Nowness. There's a, a social media account called Nowness, and they really like put great uh, um, shorts from all over the world, like Chinese directors, Korean directors, Taiwanese directors. There's also like, I think this guy was uh, um, an American based in Chengdu, China, and uh so and and that's how i got to know i got to know about last year of darkness mm. uh, very interesting watch otherwise just i have to this is this is uh, this is me keeping myself accountable i have to get to start writing my horror shorts mm -hmm. remember guys i think it's good it's good to to plug a bit bruce's uh, short uh, short movie challenge it's happening in October, but October comes like this. It's called Video Nasties. Um, let me let me check if I can put up the group as well. And if talking we about uh, Bruce mentioning Bruce, Bruce actually has uh, a screening. He's going to have a screening. Uh, he's going to be screening oh. Son of God, uh, as well as six other shorts, and he's going to be doing that at Eden on May the seventh. Come and see his collection of creepy short films. Um, obviously, the money for that will go towards film festival submissions for Son of God, which I think we're all in agreement is one of Bruce's best. Um, so, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing. I'm sharing with you guys. There's the there's yep, the poster. The that's the one. That's great, great design poster, by the way. Yeah, Bruce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really good stuff. And also good luck with Son of God. And what ah Eden Cinemas, nice, nice. Oh, there's the guy that I always forget his name, Bernard Satariano. Hope he's watching. <laughs> <this part. laughs> um, uh, yeah, but this is the group, guys. Uh, Video Nasties 2024. There's already 232 members. I think this is going to be one of the biggest Video Nasties, and uh, good. I think it's a good competition as well, going as well. Oh, so guys, they're building a community. Yes, yeah, really no, it's good. it's good. It's good. It's good. Well done. I'm very happy with uh, with what Bruce is doing. Also, let's not forget to charge Starkey that he did uh, the April Fool's thing. And if you go down, if I'm not mistaken, there are the rules which you have to follow. Like films must be original, uh, premiere at our event, at uh, the Video Nazis event. Horror run, you can also go horror comedy, horror, psychological horror, not exceed 15 minutes, and at least be uh, over 18. Okay. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Anything else, Franco? No, that's it so far. Um, I'm uh, I, I I took a bit I took a bit long because I'm studying a, a course, but that's it. Uh, I'm okay. still still reading, still reading Judith Butler, who's afraid of gender. Great read. Otherwise, not nothing much happening. So uh, I've continued my X Men kind of like rewatches. Some are rewatches, some are new watches. Uh, this was a rewatch and an unfortunate rewatch because the next movie on my list, you might be guessing, uh, is X Men Origins Wolverine, the movie that <laughs> almost <laughs> ro completely ruined the X Men films. I mean, what is there to say about it, right? It's, it's it, it's 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 a horror it's a horror film. it's good for if it was a short it would be good for bruce's competition because it's a true horror on what not to do <laughs> Wait, when... is it horror or comedy i think it's because it's <laughs> a mixture of both a mixture of both it's a, it's a i good... actually have a funny story about x men origins movie. okay go um, ahead Joe. i believe the statute of limitations is gone on this because this was back in the day when i first discovered how to download films <laughs> And like burning them to DVDs and stuff. I don't give a shit. Come after me. Like <laughs> these things, we didn't get things at the cinema back then. <laughs> no one cares. No, no one cares about you burning. They're exactly. probably happy that you that you watched it that way. Um, but I remember like freaking out because like a week after X Men Origins Wolverine came out at the cinemas, like I found a download for it. And back then, you didn't have like things that would give away what the quality was. It was just X Men Origins Wolverine. <laughs> And I downloaded it, but I downloaded it like at the time thinking, God, like what what was the release date on like what year did it release? Section like, Origins Wolverine. Let's see how old I was. Let me check, let me check, let me check really quickly. 2000 and uh, 
2009. Okay. 2009. I was what 15 <laughs> when this happened, but I, I was already like a little bit like this bullshit on the internet that you can download. It could be a virus, something like that. But I downloaded it in like good faith, opened it, and like watched the first like three minutes or something. I'm like, this is actually X Men Origins Wolverine. Like, this is the movie. Like, holy shit, I can't believe this has <laughs> happened. So, anyway, I burnt it to a DVD, all excited to watch it. And this was a big thing across, like, a lot of people on the internet have discovered this version of this film. This copy that went out early was, like, the non, like, CGI-inclusive version of the film. So, like, when there are moments, when there are moments in the film where, like, they're jumping, you can see the wires that they're attached to, which are lifting them up. Or there's a moment where Wolverine gets hit by a car, and that's obviously done in all CGI, but basically there's this big silver outline of a truck. And then like a green like ragdoll that hits it. I remember watching this film just being like, what the fuck? What about the claws? <laughs> Joe. The, claw, the, the claws, well, the claws would come out and they'd just be like these like big like green things like on his <laughs> And I remember I watched I watched the entire movie like that, because like back then I was 15, I didn't really give a shit. But yeah, apparently uh, that's how like it's a it's a legendary like relic of the internet that people that tried to illegally download X Men Origins Wolverine at the time ended up getting the version where they hadn't finished the CGI yet. <laughs> Joe, the CGI is so bad in this film that probably you watched a better version than the one, than the one I watched. Because... <laughs> Could be because like <laughs> looking back, it was hilarious. Ah, the one, not the CGI and the claws when when he's in the bathroom and he's like, and and uh, he's, he's sing, sing. His, oh my god, the spark <laughs> effect is like. <laughs> Oh, the worst CGI I've ever watched in my life. Corey, Corey, the crew really, really made fun of that. They are. Yeah, I need to watch it now. I need to watch it now. I need to There's my, uh, uh, I speaking of Corey, the crew, the Wonder Woman 1984 one. Oh, Lord. They really sh- like. But 1984, 1984, they had issues. It was COVID. It was like, that was peak COVID when they were producing no, that. Not they were doing that shit at home. <laughs> no, no, no. I understand why they messed up with 1984. <laughs> Listen, oh, we saw you've got, you've got a high end editing machine, you can make that kind of yes, <laughs> like one of his stuff at home. Oh, yeah, yes, and yes. And, 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 uh, and why they messed up with that. No, but and we have and we have the benchmark of Godzilla minus one that that the director is the VFX editor, and uh, there was not it, there wasn't just the I uh, the thing about COVID, there was also like uh. Too many teams working on the VFX. One, one working on one scene, one working on the other. Uh, yeah. Now, so it's not. It wasn't just COVID thing. I mean, that's understandable. But if, even uh, it, it that, speaking of Star Wars, it doesn't bode well that there's Patty Jenkins. Unfortunately, um, uh, I don't know why. It, why it's not Catherine Bigelow doing something? The issue, Franco. I think the Catherine issue Bigelow is... for some reason just can't make a film <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> that's true. That's what, true. Why? Why? She hasn't had a film since Detroit. Yeah, this is, yeah. I, like, I haven't seen that. And I think that's okay. Was she, she was never the most like prolific filmmaker in the terms of like she would make something every couple of years, but like I haven't heard any kind of whisper of her doing anything since. Hmm. Which is a shame. Uh, I like Catherine Bigelow movies on, on 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 Jenkins. Um I I don't know how you are with the first with the first um, Wonder Woman. I Quite enjoyed it. I was in the cinema. Yeah. It was a fun I, watch. The first, the first one, the woman was enjoyable, except for the moment I where in my last thirty minutes, of course. But we forget exactly. that exactly. Yeah, David, that, that's a David Tool Tool is, movies now. David, David Tool is doing ADR. <laughs> then you will die. <laughs> you will die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but we forget and... that part. Minus that part, it was. I think it was a good movie. To, to the point where they were in the trenches and attacking doing that, those those fight scenes. Oh, right? no, the, the the no man's land scene is yeah. for me one of the best scenes no, in a superhero. Great, great, great. I mean, great. superhero yeah. film. And it has oh. one of the best like theme songs for a superhero. Oh like, yeah, yes, 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 yes. yeah, that's great stuff. That's really good stuff. But the issue, I think, and I saw a list of films that she directed and a list of films that she wrote and directed. When she writes, the film is generally poorly received. When she's just the one directing it, generally you'll notice that the films are of higher quality. And for example, she took full creative control of 1984, and we know how how that went. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. I think I think that might be the issue. She's a good director, not a very good writer, though. When she had full con- okay. creative control of Wonder Woman, um, so oh, that was yeah. she, she did monster. 
Lalo. Yeah, it's the thing she's most renowned for, Monster. Stra, that, that's a real good movie. Sh- a great Charlize Theron uh, um, uh, performance there. So recently I watched Monster. I don't know if you guys watched you talking about Monster, the the Hirokazu Monster. No, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, you need to watch that, guys. That was one of the best movies that I've watched this year. It's probably uh, right after Dune with regard to it's competing probably with Dune before it's, best yeah. movie of the year. Okay. So uh, it's really good stuff. Really good. But I had reviewed it a while ago, I think. I had reviewed it a while ago. Uh, moving on. So that was the bad movie of the week. I always have to watch a bad movie you know, every week. <laughs> uh, but then I watched some good stuff. I watched some good classics. I watched uh, Suspiria, um, Dario Argento, fantastic stuff. I really need to get the Blu-ray for, for Suspiria. I cannot. Oh, I can only imagine the colors on Suspiria on Blu-ray, man. Deep, the deep red, red. The red. Have you seen Deep Red, yo? No, I have not. No, I have not. Deep Red is also Deep Red. I was am, am, amazed by by how good it was. Like list, yeah. And and some people also uh, like uh, some people also say that Stendhal syndrome is also not bad. The Stendhal syndrome, but I think it's uh, it's uh, how shall I put it? It's uh, either or. Some people like it. Some people like what the fuck mm-hmm. is this? Mm-hmm. I'll try check them out this week. Um, so yeah, I watched Suspiria. Great stuff. I mean, it's one. I think one of the best horror movies I've watched and, recently. Uh, A good and, uh, soundtrack, man, by Goblin. Oh, oh. Soundtrack by Goblin is so good. Oh, oh my god! Really good. I was constantly turning to Tristan anytime the, 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 the that that you know that that thing, the tense soundtrack comes. I'm like, oh, something's gonna happen. <laughs> um, uh, Joe, you know what this what what Suspiria reminded me of? Another great Jallo classic. Immaculate. <laughs> Joe, can you can you share a screen of Joe's face, please? <laughs> let's let's highlight it. Wait, no, I didn't watch this version of the sphere. I watched the other version. <laughs> Don't you let's agree, highlight. Joe? That uh, it's there's quite similar. Um, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna ignore that so we can carry on. <laughs> Uh, uh when I was watching this year, I was like, man, I'm gonna pass a joke about about Immaculate during the podcast. And I'm gonna see if Joe's face <laughs> writhing in pain. Have yeah, you I'm have you seen have you seen the, the, the Guadagnino um uh, version? Yeah. You know, I thought I had watched it, but I hadn't no, I have not. I thought I watched all Guadagnino, but that's mm. the one I haven't watched from him. I, I, I like saw... the Guadagnino version. Uh huh. Okay. okay. Which you yeah. prefer? No. I mean, it's weird because like the only thing they really have in common is the story. Like Guadagnino doesn't try to make a giallo horror when he makes it. He makes it much, much more grotesque than the first one is, and kind of more like art house in where like you can see just in the length. Like this is a two hour and thirty two minute movie. It's long. How do you, how do you turn how do you turn Suspiria into a two hour thirty two minute movie? He gives yeah. it a, a, a little bit more depth in the in the characters. I'll give him mm-hmm. that. It's not perfect. Like you feel the length of it. I remember when I had seen it, I was working for a cinema company which will remain nameless. Um, <laughs> and I used one of the free tickets that they gave me every month. Um, and of course, the spirit, I was the only person in the theater. Granted, it was a late showing, like it was like 9 p.m. or something. But I remember leaving because, like, I mean, 9 p.m. showing by the time the film starts is half past nine, a two and a half hour film. It's basically midnight at that point. But I remember leaving, there was like no smart attendant when I was walking out. <laughs> and like just all the lights were off in the building. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, this is nice. I, can, I could just like stay here all night and no one would have known. <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. So yeah, that's Suspiria. Um, and then I watched uh, Wicked Little Letters, we'll review later on. Uh, I watched The Birds as well. I had a good rewatch of The Birds with my family. Watched it on Sunday uh, after my birthday meal. Great stuff. Another great horror. Amazing tension. You know, I mean, you are, after all, watching the master of suspense. Uh, then series. I watched episode five of X-Men 97. Guys, if you're not watching X-Men 97, please go and watch it because episode five was one of the best episodes of television I watched uh, this year. Honestly, it's, 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 it's really good stuff. Uh, I, I mean, the stuff that happens in 30 minutes of episode five Mind blowing. I can't mention anything because of, I don't want to spoil the story, but man, the way it ends. Oh, painful. Pain. I, I was almost crying. I was almost crying. 
almost very important. Never, I never cry. We, yeah, we, we know that you're a psychopath. You don't cry. It's okay. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but episode five was, you know, I was on the edge. Uh, I watched the whole of Fallout. I'll review that later on. Like Joe, I watched episode eight of uh, Shogun. Great stuff. Uh, I watched episode three of Sugar. Sugar, I don't know if you guys remember, is the Colin Farrell uh, series. Um, episode three was a was a slow episode compared to the first two episodes. But to be fair, it's a thirty minute show. It's thirty minute episodes mostly, so it, it flies by. I'm I, I I'm enjoying it so far. I'm enjoying all the different uh, classic Hollywood classic references they make throughout uh, the series. I'm enjoying where the storyline is going. Exactly, Joe, what you had said about how they're going to explore the deep, you know, dark side of Hollywood the deep and underbelly of LA. The yeah. Underbelly of LA, you know, it's 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 what we expected. Um, but I think it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Very well made. Very well shot. And obviously, Colin Farrell is the rating and and giving an amazing performance in it. And uh, the last uh, series I watched, I was the first three episodes of Franklin. Um, actually, there's this, Franklin, and I watched another episode of Manhunt, both on Apple TV+. Plus. Um, this, is, this is slow, very slow, very slow stuff. But I'm glad they're taking their time with this. Um, there's there's uh, Basically, it's, it tackles the story of how Franklin traveled to France uh, during the American Revolution, uh, attempting to enlist the aid of the French monarchy in their war against the British Empire and it's a, it's it's a show which focuses a lot on the intrigue on the on kind of like the spy work going on and how Franklin tried to maneuver and use all his knowledge of diplomacy to try and get the the French on the side of the Americans um it's 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 good stuff it's very good stuff i think visually this is incredible the costumes are insanely good the set pieces the production design is out of this world, I think Apple threw a lot of money at this, uh, and I hope they do well with this because I love period pieces. I love costume, you know, period pieces. It's 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 good stuff. It's again, it's slow. I know for some people this might be actually dull. For me, someone someone who loves watching old white people discuss the future of their country, <laughs> I'm having a blast watching it so far. I watched the first two episodes. There's another third episode as well, which released. I'll watch it probably after the podcast. That's it with regard to what I've been watching. And with that, guys, first of all, viewers and listeners, let us know in the comment section below what you've been up to, what you've been watching, uh, reading, or playing. Let us know in the comment section below. We'd love to hear. By the way, Bruce, no problem at all. Uh, he said he enjoys messing around on Photoshop. Photoshop. With that, guys, I'll I think... Yes, or, or chat with us, guys. Chat with us because uh, right, still, still, the boomer that is Andrea still hasn't realized that we can chat live. Tell us what you have been watching. Yeah, and, I, I just call them comments. I just call them comments. <laughs> <laughs> but they um, st still, especially for people who are watching later. Yes, please do comment and leave us a like and subscribe. Yes, sir. Um, the la latest viewership was very good, and the last episode was, we had very good viewership. So good noise, stuff, noise. good stuff. Let's keep it up. Um, so we have a couple of trailers. I think we can start off with Speak No Evil because I know Joe, both John oh. have very strong. Oh. Opinions. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't have very strong opinions about this trailer, but I I haven't watched the original, so that's probably well, you have now. Why? <laughs> um, <I> <laughs> <laughs> if you if you watch the trailer be prepared for no surprises exactly so first of all viewers and listeners do not watch this trailer no, just yes. hear us talk about it we won't spoil anything for you but do not watch the trailer <laughs> so james mcavoy faces a family trip from hell in speak no evil trailer the remake of the 2022 danish psychological horror film it's theaters <laughs> In oh, September. Why, why is it even so as James McAvoy faces the No, head it's not James McAvoy. Oh, no, <laughs> it's Scoot McNary who's the one. Lost the man. Head. They are fucking I, this movie all over the place. I, I, this is Collider. I haven't watched it. I don't know. I, I, I just find Collider convenient for trailer commentary. <laughs> um, so Blumhouse is taking. Oh, this is Blumhouse. Oh, okay. Uh, taking uh, viewers on a nightmarish vacation. Of course, it's Blumhouse. <laughs> of course it's Blumhouse. <laughs> with the first trailer for the English remake of the 2022 Danish horror film Speak No Evil, unveiled during Universal's panel at CinemaCon. Footage introduces James McAvoy and Mackenzie Davis 
into an initially mundane setting, a family trip with new friends, before twisting it into a psychological terror where kindness becomes questionable and nobody is as they initially is, seem. Is this, is this These Chad people GPT? did not watch the trailer. No, this is written by Chad GPT. Yeah, they did, they did not, to, to pair James McAvoy and Mackenzie Davis with this, they did not watch the trailer. I'm, I'm angrier than I thought I would be at this. <laughs> Go ahead, Joe. Go ahead. If you oh, listened oh. back over the last year, when I saw Speak No Evil, I believe, last year and we did our best of the year it made my top five i really mm -hmm. really really liked that mm. film and it's a weird thing to say that i really liked that film because as franco will know as well it's probably a strange thing to like a film like that but i really really liked how shocking it was how risky it was the way it put this kind of really awkward awkward like really tense comedy in it as well it was so danish in the way that they did i love love when the danish come out with a film like this because they seem to be they seem to be white people doing really unique things with the medium <laughs> when they do stuff. And we, white people at the moment, we're not, especially in Hollywood, we're not doing a lot of unique things with the medium. <laughs> but then they announced like maybe like a month after the previous, like the original film got an actual wide release. They're like, yeah, Blumhouse come in and they're like, yeah, we're going to take another really beloved indie horror film and we're just, yeah, we're going we're gonna to remake it, guys, you know? And guess what? what? It's coming like in the next year. You know, we're going to make this really quickly with not a lot of effort. We're going to put big names in it, like James McAvoy and Scoop McNary and Mackenzie Davis. And I'm just, why? This was like when The Guilty came out in 2018. Yeah, and the day one was like jaw-droppingly phenomenal of an exercise of like how you do a one character, one location thriller and make it interesting. And then Hollywood's like, nope, Antoine Foucault and Jake Gyllenhaal. And it's going to be really bland and nowhere near as good as the original. And they're doing this again. And again, if you if you have had the displeasure of watching this trailer, it gives away absolutely everything. 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 This looks like a basically like copy paste of the original with none of like the charm, because there is charm in the original, or the wit or the grotesqueness of the original. If you've seen this trailer, don't don't bother. Like Maybe go watch the original because I still think there's a, a lot that merits a watch of that film. But this is just so so soulless, and like it's it, it's just so cheap in a way. And like Blumhouse, a lot of people love them. I really liked them when they first came on the scene because they were like, "Yes, we like making horror movies, and we want to get horror movies out to a much bigger audience." But now they're putting shit like this all the time, and they're doing it again. I messaged you guys midweek. It was another one that came up at CinemaCon. They're like, we're going to remake The Blair Witch again. Mm. He's the, another one. Running the show, and I'm assuming another Jason one. Blum has a lot to do with it since it is his studio. But whoever the big wigs are at Blumhouse, they don't understand how horror is a really good genre for capturing a moment in time. The reason why Speak No Evil did so well at the festival that premiered at, I think it was Sundance, but I could be wrong. The reason it did so well is because people didn't expect to see something that shocking and they did and what the original Blair Witch had in 1999 as we would say what the lightning in a bottle that it had is that when that film came out people didn't know whether it was real or a film mm. because of the way it was made no one had ever done like a VHS found footage film like that before at least for American audiences no one had seen it so people would come out to this film and they were like shit was that real and the whole marketing campaign was sublime with like the missing posters and like if you see this person kind of thing mm. they capture that was a moment in time that we will never experience again and you can't get that with another Blair Witch film like like look at the, look at this photo the, 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 where, where is James McAvoy and Mackenzie Davis it's Scoot McNair and Mackenzie Davis uh, it's just, it, it. it is it is know. it is so spelled out man it is so yeah. spelled out even the other photo with him like this yeah, because like like uh, Joe said, now, now now obviously I was not as sold as Joe is, but I can still do appreciate that it's far superior than, than what I've seen from the trailer. What I've seen from the trailer is a fucking American dumbing down of, of a really great concept. Yeah. And and to have to have the one of the major twists being given in the tra in the trailer is I don't know who, who took care of the trailer. Yeah. but it is unimaginable it, it's also i don't think it works 
with an American with Americans in this case, because one of the things that the original film kind of comments on is this extremely like I would call it a very European politeness of like no matter like how mm. kind of awkward things get, you mm. still kind of hold it together just out of being polite to like smooth things over. Now, my experience of a lot of Americans, just from what I see on the internet, this is not a judgment of Americans in any way, is that if things got a little bit sinister or strange, a lot of Americans would be like, hold the fuck up, what's going on here, kind of thing. Mm -mm -mm. They they don't have that same kind of Europeanness that we have, where we'll be like, this is very weird, but if I just keep quiet and continue being polite, it'll be over very soon. And that's what the what? first one was a really good commentary on. So I, I just don't think this works as a whole. Okay, or Franco, least, anything you want to add? At, no, or at least, or at least transpose it, transpose it in America itself. You know, like uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Again, last last time I told you about uh, uh, Let the Right One In and Let Me In. Yeah, they're both they're both great movies, and it's like yeah. yeah, of course, of course, they're a remake. But Let Me In and Let Me In, it, it transposed it into America, and it still works as a. You could see them as kind of an interpretation of one source material. This yeah. is like a copy paste, put it back in, in Europe. I mean, yeah. I, 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 that's what so I mean. A, re a remake or a readaptation, that's what it should be. You should take the best things of something, but put your own spin onto them. Like, I mean, the best di directors who adapt things normally are the ones that take the best of the source material, but they make mm -hmm. it their own. It's why something like The Shining is so revered. It's, I mean, it's, it's not as well known as a film, but what Alex Garland did with Annihilation. He took mm, skeleton mm, of the annihilation novel, but he changed so much stuff from the book. The spirit, the spirit is there, is still there. Right? That cosmic horror. The, yes, um, completely, uh, completely. But the, the 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 ending of annihilation compared to the ending of the book, they're completely different. It's different, yes, yes. But even yes, even yes. the author has appreciated what Alex Garland did because he's like, it's what an adaptation should be. He took my original ideas and my skeleton, paid homage to them, but then did his own thing. Yeah, that's that's the stamp of like it sounds really really wanky to say this, but that's a stamp of an artist that they do that, you know. Okay, okay. Yep. So I'm guessing you guys won't be going to watch. Speak you no you evil. could you couldn't pay me to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> and again, please avoid the trailer if you if you don't yes. want to spoil the movie. Yes, if yes. You want if you ha if you haven't seen the trailer by some kind of miracle because it's been everywhere, go and watch the original. Yes, please, yes, definitely. And moving on now to another trailer. I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts about this one. And now I'm talking about the first Joker Folly uh, the trailer, which has had um, some mixed reactions, some very positive reactions and some very negative reactions as well. Following Joker's successful release, man, successful, one billion over a billion. Um, Todd Phillips' highly anticipated sequel, Joker for Lea Duh, is ready to dance into theaters later this year. Starring Joaquin Phoenix and Lady Gaga, the upcoming sequel will once more follow Arthur Fleck, Joker this time bringing Lady Gaga's Harley Quinn into the fold. Uh, audiences finally got a look at the first trailer for Joker for Lea Duh, ahead of its October 4th release in theaters. Franco, I'm going to start off with you. What do you think about the trailer for Joker for Lea Duh and the direction that Todd Phillips is taking, Joker? So I'm uh, neither here nor there. I still haven't seen the first Joker, the Todd Phillips Joker. What I can say, it looks fantastically filmed. I mean, the colors, the colors, and the cinematography. I think Joe would agree also on this one mm -hmm. that it looks yeah, fantastic. Hundred percent. The first one but, did too. Yes, hundred percent. But I'm neither here nor there. Um, uh, like most probably, yes, Joe. Like. Again, I can I cannot comment as such because I haven't see, watched the first one. Um, but I know the first one is very derivative, very, very, very derivative of Taxi Driver. Um, this one, I don't know where he's gonna take it. Will it work? Will it not work? Um, what kind of commentary he's going to make? And uh, you know, and I don't know how subtle <laughs> of uh, no zero <laughs> subtlety, zero subtlety. <laughs> I'm crazy. I'm pointing a gun at my head. I'm crazy. That's the subtlety mm -hmm. in a Todd Phillips movie. I mean, <laughs> uh, I mean, not uh, a lot of subtlety, right? None. 
I don't know. And what 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 was it? What was it that the, the why was there mixed reactions because of Lady Gaga or what is it? Let me hear Joe's thoughts first, and then and then we'll get into like the mixed reactions about it. Joe, what do yeah. you think about the trailer? Um, I'll start off by saying the original Joker film. Um, I liked when it first came up as an idea of an R-rated Joker, which stands alone from any other DC properties, because I love, I mean, he, in my opinion, one of the best villains ever written. The Joker, he's the complete antithesis to the hero that he takes on in the Batman. Um, but I did, I was trepidatious when like someone like Todd Phillips came in, mainly because he'd only done like comedies before. But I did like the first Joker film. I thought Phoenix was a very good choice. Um, but then it came back to the Todd Phillips of it all. Like the first Joker, it's really weird. And it's like a lot of what I'm about to say is going to sound very like cinephile and judgmental. And it's, <laughs> it's not meant to, but it's also meant to a little bit at the same time. Because guys, we can be honest, the three of us here, we love films. We, like, we don't go to watch a film purely for entertainment. We like to see it from an artistic standpoint mm -hmm. and the merits that it gets from that. So we have, just by that nature, because of the way like we study, for lack of a better term, we have a deeper understanding of certain things and a deeper back catalog than most people do who tend to watch these things just for entertainment. The first Joker and even this trailer seem to be doing a lot for people who are casuals and they're really admiring. And it's good that it, 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 to, to say this is good that they're admiring like certain shots and camera techniques from these things. But I saw a post on Twitter which completely encapsulated everything which I wanted to say about this um, Joker 2 trailer. Everyone's going on about that shot in the trailer of where oh, like, no. he's behind the glass and they they draw the smiley face and then the camera pans That's and it lines up perfectly with him. I've ever seen. Yeah. There, are people, there are people losing their minds being like, holy shit, how did they think of this? But someone <laughs> retweeted someone's tweet of someone saying this is the best shot ever and they retweeted it as saying like bro please please let me suggest you some really good films i promise if you like this shot you will like movies <laughs> and that, that is that is exactly how i feel like joe joe joker and now even jokey folio joker folio deux, they kind of feel like baby's first art house mm -hmm. or like baby's <laughs> first like real film because you say like how derivative like the first joker was of not just taxi driver but also the king of comedy you didn't have you didn't pull exactly. from one great martin scorsese film you pulled from two great martin scorsese films and you put them together and that's not always a bad thing it's not always a bad thing um uh, joe can um because i had post had posted on on one of those twitter posts where they said like this is the one of the best shots i've ever seen yeah in a oh, trailer yeah, yeah. And I I posted the one of, I think probably the most famous letterbox review ever made, which is the one on Joker, which is a one star review for Joker. And the review is: if you've never swam in the ocean, then of course a pool seems deep. Yes, <laughs> I, yes. And that's my favorite. Yes. My favorite review. Yes. That was that was my exact reaction to Joker. I'm like, it's well made, and the performance is good. The script sucks. The script for Joker really sucks, guys. But I can I can ignore that because again, it's really well made, good lead, good concept. You had good ideas in there. It's extremely well shot. The soundtrack is incredible, right? It has oh, very good, very good things. Oh, really? Then getting back to the Todd Phillips of it all, he is the most unsubtle director I have ever seen. And you don't just need to look at Joker and probably now Joker for Leo Do with that shot of the fucking lipstick on the glass because that's uh, so unsubtle. Because <laughs> we already know he's the Joker. It's fucking it's stupid. Anyway, um, if you look back at his previous films, all the way from a film like, have you guys seen Old School? No, I, but I know which Old one School is, was, yeah. a, was a comedy from the early 2000s. It's like a kind of like big bro frat house comedy, extremely unsubtle. Guys, the Hangover movies are so mm. unsubtle with everything to do. They are all this <laughs> gross out, larger than life comedies. And I like the first Hangover. If you look at his movie Due Date, also extremely unsubtle the guy doesn't do subtlety and again not necessarily a bad thing but i like a bit of like subtlety in my film and when you are coming across as i'm going to make something really serious and joker takes itself so seriously so seriously you kind of want a little bit of subtlety like in in joker there's literally a scene where the character shouts out the entire like message of what the film is trying to say <laughs> 
literally shouts it out. You know, by the and way, again, and that works for some people. Yes, yes, yes. It but does. to speak about my actual thoughts about this trailer, to echo Franco, it looks incredible. It'll probably sound incredible as well. I am again back on this thing of like this probably isn't really a musical but musical play a big part because people are like oh like it's it's going to be a musical and there are going to be 13 original songs in it that could that could be the score of the film guys mm -hmm. i don't believe if you've got a musical and you've shown up a teaser you're not going to show any kind of the musical numbers or like what they might be singing or something like that we had a discussion there in the week franco i'm i'm still not sold on lady gaga and i i'm not particularly sold on mm. her in this trailer I, as but well listen Listen, maybe the movie won't be as sh sh shallow, shallow, you know? <laughs> but the, th the, the way, thing is, I, when they, when they uh, announced those young... people and they said it's going to be a musical, I was like, okay, that sounds really unique and cool. Uh -huh. In fact, Jan, Jan mentioned Joker can go anywhere. Very bold, bold move with being a musical. Um, Mostly. I think and it's Chan uh, Chan 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 quite, by the uh, way. To be fair, and I agree a little bit with Jan, although I don't like the fact that there are some musical elements to it, uh, the way I'm imagining it, because it could go completely left field and, and completely surprise me. But I think it's a very brave decision to come out and say that there are going to be strong musical elements in your film after how successful the first Joker was. Well, because I'm it's, assuming... it's, not even, it's, it's not even that they said strong musical elements. Todd Phillips said, this is a musical. Right now, it does not look like that. I think it's oh, going to be a musical. He said it's a musical. He said it's yes. a musical. Yes. I thought they just said it's just... You know, strong musical no. elements. What well, I, I think, I think there's going to be. I think music is going to play thematically a very big part. I do not think it's uh -huh. going to be a song and dance musical, which I'm actually disappointed by. I heard some uh, comments about it uh, that said that um, Harley Quinn and Joker find kind of like they feel calm and they build a relationship based on music. So when she's singing, yeah. Um, I, uh, I imagine there's a scene in the first Joker where he's in the bathroom and he does that like dance by himself and the music is swirling. I imagine there's going to be a lot more of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, exactly. Well, so, um, anything else you want to add, Franco? I don't know if you want to add anything to. to uh, I was, I was gonna, I was gonna say if this is, I'm, I haven't seen Cabaret by Bob Foss, but I'm wondering if this is going to be very derivative of that now <laughs> or something <laughs> by Bob Foss. Don't get, don't give Phillips any ideas. He might go back in the editing room. <laughs> <laughs> Todd Phillips, friend of the show, Todd Phillips. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it made a lot of money. It got a lot of nominations. Yeah, 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 yeah. BAFTAs, Critics' Choice, Golden Globes, Screen Actors I mean, Guild. Ph Ph Phoenix won his first Best Actor for the Best for Actor, the exactly. Well, you know, it felt, like, it felt like they were giving him the Oscar for the Master. Yeah, Oscar, yes, yes. Oscar Beatty, Oscar Beatty. Oh, so, you know, it was nominated for Best Adapted Screenplay, Oscar. Huh? Okay. That's so stupid. <laughs> how but, how is it an adapted screenplay? Like there, there isn't a Joker story like this. Fr from uh, yeah, from graphic novels. Mm -hmm. is but this, when you put a this... character which has so much literature behind so it. So what? You've got a, you've it's, got a piece of a, IP that does not get you an adapted, adapted screenplay. It's like the fucking Barbie thing all over again. Oh, but the Barbie's different. But the Barbie's different. But the Barbie one is different. It's just wow. as bad. So much, it's, so much strong literature it's, behind. It, it, there should there should well, be Barbie's a like section. the biggest selling toy of like all time. <laughs> Exactly, and there should be a section called well, that's, that's adapted toys. That's just toys. best adapted IP. Best adapted IP. Yes. That's it. Yes. More awards. Spe you can give them out to more people. Speaking of Margot Robbie, apparently she's trying to 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 adapt Monopoly. Yeah. Yeah, I saw I saw a very I saw a very good tweet of that. It said if this if if this Monopoly movie is some kind of like some kind of like metaphor for like anti capitalism, I'm going to fucking kill myself in the cinema <laughs> there and then. <laughs> I mean, it was supposed to be honest. It was uh, Monopoly originally. It was that. Uh, it was an yes. like yes. To be fair, if they and, do, if they if they do that, that they that they bring like Monopoly Land, like Barbie Land, then it starts off. It's meant to be to teach you about like access and like home owning, and it's not meant to be capitalist. But then people swoop in and turn it into like a capitalist thing. There's a movie in that. There is. <laughs> Maybe I, I don't know. I, I don't know how good a movie there is in it, but. Like, <laughs> Is there going to be a shoe Ma or a dog that just run around all the time? Ma Martin Scorsese should should uh, should direct it actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I'll then I'll yeah. throw myself off a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Anyways, talking about how shitty capitalism is, let's talk about Ubisoft. <laughs> I think that's a good segue oh, for go. shitty Ubisoft. 
because there's a couple of things to mention here. First of all, we had the trailer for Star Wars Outlaws, and I kind of agree with uh, the title given to us by Forbes that the Star Wars Outlaws trailer looks shockingly bad. Forgetting all the Ubisoft shitty part, I honest, I really think the first gameplay trailer was quite decent. We had yeah, commented we'll about it. We had commented about it during. I think that was that Gamescom. I'm, I'm not sure what that was. Okay. Or the Games Award. No, I think that was the Games Award where they showcased the game, the first gameplay trailer. It looked fun. The whole concept of open world seemed interesting, although we know an Ubisoft open world game is going to burn you out after a few hours because of all the fucking shit that comes up on screen. But anyway, I mean, it's not Elden Ring, right? Um, but so I, I was interested in this, and this is one of the games I was looking forward to getting um, this year. But then I saw the story trailer. And holy shit, it feels like a game from 10 years ago. Like some of the animation, some of the, the movement from the characters just looked completely off. And this is exactly what, what the Forbes uh, guy said. Something is very off about the first trailer for Ubisoft's upcoming Star Wars Outlaws. I found myself deeply unimpressed by just about all of it, which is the same, since it sounds like the kind of game I'd really enjoy. Um, guys... Do you know if you've watched the trailer for for Star Wars? I, have, I, have, I haven't seen the latest trailer because I haven't really been excited for it to be honest. Because I saw all the stuff about all the different versions of the game, and I was like, "This feels like something which they just they just want people to spend a load of money on first, and then not really back it up as Ubisoft do in their very typical fashion." So, yeah, Franco, Franco, you're, I think you're muted. I, think, I believe he muted himself. Um, uh, sorry, I, I saw the outrage, but the outrage is misplaced, and the outrage is all focused not on how shit it looks, but on her jaw. Like fucking hell, guys! Yeah. I did, I did see a bit of the jaw outrage. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is so I, fucking stupid. I like, like, I like the, I like the people were countering that with just posting pictures of Sigourney Weaver from Alien. <laughs> 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 which, which she, she was badass. What the hell, man? Yeah, yeah. The issue is, I think I saw some post on Twitter where they're like, the original actress for the character, the character's name is Kai Vess, Humberly yeah. Gonzalez. She, I mean, she, she's stunning. I saw a photo of her. She's she is, really yeah. good looking. And, and everyone was saying, why did they turn the stunning actress into a character who looks almost like a man? I oh. mean, it's, it's an outlaw. It's an outlaw. I don't think models will be, you know, fighting against the hut <laughs> and <laughs> let's, let's be honest what, they're what's, out what's, much, right what's her and what's her name what's her name of uh, of love lies bleeding rose something she speaking of star wars because she was also rose star glass wars. no not rose glass uh, well, rose the, glass the director Bodenberg. of love lies bleeding oh yeah Bodenberg. katie katie something katie yeah, or something yeah she was um, in and or for a little bit. Could be, yes. Could be. Um, uh, what's her name again? Katie O'Brien. Uh, Katie O'Brien. Katie O'Brien looks fucking hot. I'm sorry. I mean, um, for me, at least. Uh, she has a very strong jawline. Very strong jawline. Mm. But still hot. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, I it's don't all, it's, all, it's, it's 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 a character in a video game who gives a shit. Exactly, man. This is like, this like, is like it's, again. It's... it's, it's it's not a real person who's trying to take you to bed. Like you're gonna be controlling but, but, them. With look a at controller. this, guys. Look at this, guys. I, um, this is another thing that the Forbes article focuses on. There's been a massive downgrade in the graphics as well. This is the original trailer. There always American is. It's TV a Ubisoft game. And I mean, we all remember the oh, what was that game? The hacker game, which had the massive downgrade. Watch Dogs. Yeah. Watch, Watch dogs. dogs. Oh my look, god, look that, at, was the worst. that was the worst. Assassin's Creed Unity, where like the game was, the, you had floating teeth and like. But I think Unity was a good game. I think Unity was a very good game. I loved it. But Unity. very glitchy. I know. I remember one of them was a good game. Glitchy. With a good game, but a good game. Unity was a very good game. But but the downgrade in Watch Dog mod on, I remember the original trailer blew everyone. It looked incredible. Mind. Then you released I mean, it, and like the, the explosions were like clip art. Yeah. <laughs> that looked like, I mean, it looked too good to be true now that I watch it. Like, well, I watched it recently. I don't know why it popped. I think there was a Watch Mojo, like top 10. 
most uh, what was it trailers most most misleading trailers something like that that popped up on yeah. my YouTube. Uh, obviously, that was number one. <laughs> look, was look can can we call a spade a spade? Stop calling it misleading. The scammiest trailers ever because this is a fucking scam. Can we just say now and put it down out there in detail? This is all a fucking scam, man. Yeah. How, how can you put up a trailer like that? You promise me this, and then and then you come up with this. Leaving this, I'm sorry. This is the, the main character, right? Kai Vess. I mean, here. She looks fine. Uh, something happened. Something messed up. It's a, it could either be the lighting, the lighting, and and uh, ah, but I don't know what happened. The, the worrying thing is, this is the story trailer. So mostly these are these are cutscenes. This isn't even gameplay. These are cutscenes, yeah. and if the cutscenes look this bad. God only knows the, the gameplay how bad that's going to look. Because generally it's yeah. the cutscenes which look amazing, right? Almost photorealistic, and then you understand the gameplay can't be completely photorealistic. Yeah, but but then again, then the again, uh, what's what's of Carl? What's what's his name? Carl uh, says, you know, you know him, Joe. Carl Sestos. Carl Kestis. Carl Kestis. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Carl, uh, did that game, game? That game is EA or UB, Ubisoft? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, but that that looks looks very 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 decent, no? Yeah, but you've got a. It's the thing is that game is published by EA, but it's developed by Respawn, who are actually a very, yeah. very good developer. And Respawn are very. So it's it it can be with the de developers as well. I mean, uh, Ubi Ubisoft they they developed most of their own games. Like they they took the team that did the division for this game. Oh boy! And they made them make this, and it does it does not look good. Oh boy! I mean, these look fine. I think this, this, and this look fine. Yeah, but like that, that that's a, a creature that doesn't exist, and it's a robot. Yeah, doesn't look fine. We have no reference yeah. for them in real life. Yeah, and and I completely agree with what he said here because I was looking at it. Everything feels cheaper in the story trailer than in the EEI. Uh, and Andrea Andrea is out. Uh, most probably, he got banned by Ubisoft. <laughs> Um, for shitting on Could Ubisoft, um, uh, we'll wait for him a bit. <laughs> no, Andrea, he's still rolling. I know, I know. I don't think he's uh, Andrea. You're you're not uh, on, so wait, please. <laughs> oh, yeah, my, this is more than misleading. That this is pure utmost scam. Even even with Star Wars, there was another Star Wars. E -la -la, the, the, so bad. I forgot which one was it. It's it's not been good for Star Wars recently. <laughs> in, in all, the last, the... In, ever since this really small indie company bought the rights to them, I think their name is Disney. It hasn't been good for Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mama. But uh, yet, yeah. tell us, guys. I think that's all. That's all as far as news goes, right? Um, I, I believe so. I, I think it might be. So in the meantime, while Andrea tries to fix his technical errors, you know, boomers don't know anything about technology. Um, uh, we find it really I... funny that you call him a boomer, but you are older than him. I am. I am the boomer. Yes. Yeah, so this this morning, I was roasted mercilessly by my colleagues because of my age, and I still have no kids. But yeah, guys, I'm a I'm an eligible oh, that's bachelor. Such a, such a Maltese thing, man. <laughs> so multi oh, oh you're this age you should definitely have a wife and kids by now <laughs> no but uh, but then i tell them you know you know why i look younger because i don't have a wife exactly. and kids <laughs> yeah. do, you, do you know why if i want to i can leave this job and get a job on the other side of the world because i don't have any other <laughs> That's <why. laughs> yeah. anyway guys we're not shitting on people who are committed and have families no no so at, 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 the end of, at the end of the day whatever floats your boat Exactly. So I think we're time. It's time to do some reviews, right? I think so because I, I I I'm pushing and the have, amount yeah, of time I, push, I actually have here. Hour. Hello, I'm and back. back again. Oh, Just I'm in back time back. for the All reviews. Right. Good stuff. Good okay. stuff. Good stuff. All right, we're back. So I was just, just to get into. Yeah, from Joe, home. don't 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 tell don't tell Andrea what we're telling about him behind his back. That's all. Ah, you're calling me a boomer. Any... I heard you. Every... <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Shit. Well, no, I defended you. Thank you, thank you, Joe. I defended I appreciate you. you. <laughs> I appreciate you, Joe. I was scared to refresh because I was scared because going to cancel the the stream, but thankfully, thankfully okay, okay, it didn't. No. Um, so just to mention it because time is what it is. This is just to have a look at how scummy. Ubisoft is with regard to its different editions. There's the original $70 version, which is the standard edition. 
Uh, then there is the gold edition, including two upcoming story pack DLCs, and that is at one hundred and nine, basically one hundred and ten dollars as the gold edition. And then there is the ultimate edition, including actually including a mission, a Jabba the Hutt mission. So Ubisoft are actually leaving out a mission from the standard edition. Only if you pay how much more? 70, 80, 100, 110, 20, 30, 60 dollars more. A whole game more, basically. <laughs> exactly. By which basically you can buy Hell Divers and you can buy, oh, I don't know what was that game I you was can playing. Buy Hell, you can buy Hell Divers, Dragon's Dogma, and still have change to get a pizza. Like. <laughs> yep. And Last Epoch. <laughs> Hell Divers and Last Epoch, basically. You know what's the worst thing I'm seeing about this? At the end of the Ultimate Edition, those words in brackets, the digital only. Because people make, like, developers make collector's editions, but they're usually these, like, big boxes, and they come, like, with a steel book, exactly. and they come, they, come, they come with not a digital art book, but an actual With a massive book, statue. They come with they come, exactly. When you, if, you, if you have a collector's edition for the collectors out there that like this shit, oh, that's, fair enough. I, but the fact I that this is all digital Did is bullshit and assuming you're making a season pass that people want to play your single player game longer than the actual like what is actually just on the disc is a ridiculous ask it andre i'm sure you remember the days where if you pre-ordered a game you got some nice free shit and you got like a 10 pound discount as well yep exactly it was cheap it used to be cheaper yeah it used to be cheaper i, I don't get why Way now it's cheaper cheap. Even you'd more save expensive. Yourself money, and they'd give you some free stuff. They'd give you like a, a, a couple of free skins or something. Yep. <laughs> but wait, now you can play three days earlier than the. Than ah, the so you can play before the day colors. one patch fixes all the issues in the game. That exactly. Is never going to be released. Oh no! <laughs> okay. You can go into the game and have everything glitch the fuck out, and, and uh -huh. the game's completely messed up. And then after three days, the game will be fixed. Or mm -hmm. well, it's a Ubisoft game, so it'll never be truly fixed. But you know, no. kind of <laughs> playable. And then the peasants who only paid seventy dollars can come in and play the kind of kind of fixed game, right? Oh, it's a mess. It's a complete mess. And I wish people were more angry about this rather than K versus face, because that's yeah. most yeah. of the outrage that I saw. No, and how the dare they give a woman season, a jawline? Season pass, man. Season pass in a single player open world game. And this is this is this is really pissing me off, man. Two additional narrative expansions that will release after launch, as well as the exclusive Jabba's Gambit mission day one. Like, it's safe to say, Jabba the Hutt, who appears in the story trailer, as far as I know, probably won't be in the actual main game unless you buy this extra mission. Unless you buy yes, yes, forty dollars more or or sixty dollars more, which oh, is which so is crazy, cool. crazy. We'll in a world like this. The digital only sounds very NFT like. <laughs> You yeah, know, I was like, oh, yeah. look, I have a JPG of uh, Artwick. Yeah. You know what's even better about digital only? Eventually, they could lose the distributing rights to it in your territory, yeah, exactly. and they just take it away from you. Or, exactly. like the crew. Did you hear what happened to the crew, guys? The, all the servers were removed. So now, yeah. literally, there are no servers to play the game. Yeah. And people want at least with At least with a single-player game, it's not dependent on servers, at least. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. But... It is what it is. We hate Ubisoft, and Ubisoft hates us. No, look, 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 look. If you if you pay one hundred twenty nine dollars for this shit, you should hate yourself. Yeah. Uh, if you say if if you buy this for one hundred thirty dollars and fucking complain about how shit it is, it's your fucking fault. Okay, yeah. there's nothing more to, most to say, and and don't and don't go with all this. Okay, let's go. Like, no, fuck you. You buy hundred thirty dollars worth of this shit, you deserve it. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. So, gonna skim really, really, really quickly through this. CinemaCon. We had CinemaCon this past week, and lots of new stuff were showcased. Um, obviously, the whole Joker thing we've watched. Uh, other exciting stuff, new footage for Furiosa, Mad Max Saga, uh, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, more footage for that. Um, Mickey 17 trailer showcased. And uh, now it I exists. don't know what this, yeah, it definitely exists because there's a trailer. And apparently in the original source, uh, there's Mickey, it's Mickey 7, right? And Mickey 17. He, he dies seven times. 
Um, but Bong Chun Ho has changed the title to Mickey 17 because he kills Pattinson's character 10 more <laughs> times than in the book, which is apparently how, how it works. Yeah. That's the 17, right? He dies 17 times in, in Tony the, Collette. In, oh my god, Mike Graffolo. Oh my god, that's, that's and, so yeah, Stephen Yoon. Um, really good stuff, really good stuff. And and I heard the comment, this comment made the rounds. I, I love this comment. He chose he chose Pattinson because he has a crazy thing in his eyes. I, I love agree. that comment. <laughs> I, I completely agree that Pattinson, Pattinson that has this crazy thing in his eyes. And I think this is a match made in heaven, to be honest. Uh, it's going to be released in theaters January 31st, 2025. The dumbest release date on planet Earth. Oh, God, it's a January film. Oh, no. <laughs> like, hey, I'm a, hey, I'm a January baby. Stop roasting me. Okay. No, but like the month of January is, is just the worst time to release the dumping a film. ground. No, the dumping no one ground. wants to go to the cinema when they've just had Christmas and they've spent all that money at Christmas time and they don't want to go to the cinema because they're trying to get back in shape from eating loads of food at Christmas time. So they go to the cinema, they eat sweets, they eat popcorn, and no, no one wants to go. Yep. Yep. <sighs> at least it's my More. birthday present, anyway. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, more footage for Horizon in American Saga. I heard some people talking about it. Actually, said the cinematography for this is incredible. Like this is directed by Kevin Costner, and they said the the footage for it was really stunning. I uh, heard a lot of people also say that it looks like an Amazon Prime TV show. Really? Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I watched a couple of videos from people who were on in, in uh, CinemaCon, and they were very positive about it. Yeah, they said I've it looked mixed things. Okay, okay, interesting. Uh, where did you hear the comments, Joe? Uh, I heard specifically on the Big Picture podcast from Sean Fantasy, okay. who was in attendance at CinemaCon. All right, I heard John Campia, and there were some of some of yeah. other guys on his on his podcast commenting about it. But he tends to be quite positive about most things, so that could be the thing. Uh, and a new M Night Shyamalan film, Trap. Um, Apparently, yeah. don't watch the trailer for this one when it comes out. Okay, okay, okay. From what, from what I've heard. I... Apparently it, it like it spoils the hook of the film a little bit. Oh shit! Okay. <sighs> Again, uh, coming coming uh... from Sean Fennessy at the Big Picture Podcast. Mm. Okay. okay. And there's also uh, Saleka. Saleka has also done a movie as well. His daughter, no? Uh, yes, 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 with, yes, with, yes. With, oh. Yeah, I keep seeing the trailer at um, the cinema. The Watch, I think it is. Uh, something Watch. Uh... The watches, watch. the watch. Um, yes, uh, yeah, you're going to add something, Franco? No, 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 no. Just uh, trying to find out what's uh, the name of uh, the Napo movie, basically. Watchers, watchers. Okay. Watchers, that's okay. Yes, day. So that's day one. Anything? I don't know if there's anything that interests you there, guys, or we can move uh, on. We day can move two. on. So day two, I find some shots from there. Um, uh, uh, that's just small. They're doing strangers. strangers. Chapter yeah. one during the Lions Gate yep. presentation. Because obviously we needed a prequel to that film. <laughs> oh, but but you'd be surprised. It's got a cult following. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Stranger. Yes. But it doesn't mean we need a prequel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we said we, we didn't need a prequel of First Omen, but uh, it was a very decent. We didn't. <laughs> we didn't. But I had a good time watching. I'm glad they released it because I I had a really good time at the cinema watching that. The more the more time that passes, the more I fucking hate that final oh. ten minutes. <laughs> but never... those ten minutes don't exist. That's it. You, no, they you do. Have... They do. No, unless they, you, it, unless, they it's un about unless... Unless Fox come out and they go, look, we're sorry, that was way too obvious. We're going to cut that last 10 minutes out of the film altogether. We're going to end it on the shot of her face. Until that happens, I will die on this hill. <laughs> on the topic of Shyamalan, The Village is one of the most underrated films ever, according to Bruce. Uh, I have to rewatch that, to be honest. That's, um, been, that's been a long I'm gonna time. I'm going to invoke the Fifth Amendment and keep my mouth shut. <laughs> I, I I watched it, I think, in the cinema when it came out, and I have no memory of it, but I do remember the outrage when it came out. Like the hate that movie got was insane. I I will agree. I will agree that it is wrongly so hated. Overhated. I think it is, I think. I think, I think it is just fine. I mean, That's compared com I mean, compared the to the happen. Listen, gun to, to my head, if I had to choose between the village and the happening. Oh, the I mean, 
<laughs> gone to my head if you make me choose between immaculate and the happening i'm choosing immaculate <laughs> one of the best jala movies come out <laughs> recently man uh, aziz ansari here on stage uh what else do we have more uh had very on probably for for our madonna What's uh, Borderlands movie? Borderlands, yeah. Guys, speaking of Henry Cavill, I saw a photo of Cronenworth. What's his name? The new Superman. Uh, uh, Dave Cronenworth. Cronenworth. Oh my God, Dave Cronenworth with a beard looks exactly <laughs> like like Henry Cavill. Yeah. If you if you find Dave Cronenworth for greatest hits, oh, like I was seeing double man. It's like. Uh, you know, like I say, it's it's discount, discount. Uh, <laughs> Henry Cavill, most probably. Yeah, Henry Cavill, <laughs> but you ordered him from Wish. Exactly. <laughs> Listen, I mean, we have Henry Cavill at home, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's unfortunate that they both look a lot like a Superman would. You know. <laughs> true. 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 Mello. Anyways, moving on. Uh, other stuff we got to see. Ma. Uh, Andrea. Andrea, Andrea is underwater. Yeah, Andrea is being eaten by Godzilla. Okay. Can't hear me? No, no it's fine. It's fine. All right. Uh, Superman offering a bit of a DC update. James Gunn appeared. Oh, apparently they were filming, and then James Gunn commented about it. Yeah, that's Horizon and American Saga. Mickey 17, we commented about. Trap, we commented about. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Yeah, all this stuff we commented about. Man, on page two. Here we go, man. Nosferatu. Okay, so I've heard crazy stuff about Nosferatu from the people yeah. who are there. Uh, Joe, what did you hear about it? I heard only really, really great things. The one, the one I'll go on is, again, I'm mentioning the Big Picture podcast for the third time in the show because it is my favorite, probably my favorite podcast that I listen to. Um, Sean Fennessy posted on his Twitter after having the pleasure of seeing Nosferatu footage. He said, my opinion on Nosferatu is that it looks fucking sick in all caps. <laughs> <laughs> and I apparently it's, a, it's, it's looking, because a lot of people were like, oh, like, oh, like, how do you really like remake Nosferatu, one of like the first ever horror movies and one of the most influential ones. Apparently it's starkly different in terms of its direction, in terms of what Eggers is trying to do with this film. Like he's really trying to flesh it out. So... I mean, I, I am a Robert Eggers simp. Oh, I love every here. single one of his films. Same here. And I love the cast that he's gotten together to do this. So yep. I'm, I'm, I'm excited Johnson, to say the least. Nicholas Holt, I... obviously Bill Skarsgård, the McCorrin, Willem Dafoe. So literally. Nicholas, Hol Nicholas Holt and Vampires are really most probably <laughs> going to be the new meta now. <laughs> true, true, and true. Uh, I, can't, I can't wait to listen what Bruce thinks about the Northmen. <laughs> Yeah, Bruce, did you watch The Northman? I'm curious to hear your thoughts on that. <laughs> Anyways, Wicked, which for me continues to look horrific. And every shot I see of Wicked just looks a CGI mess. It looks like Oz the Great and Powerful. <laughs> looks exactly the same. True. It looks really Is bad. Tim, Tim, really Tim bad. Burton? Is it Tim Burton? And, uh, uh, John Chu. John, John Chu. Chu, okay. Don't you? Really wish I told you, told you. <laughs> really wished I loved Eggers Northman more. <laughs> really wish. Oh my lord! Oh my lord! It's okay. <laughs> it's, it's okay to hate art, Bruce. <laughs> can, you, can you plead plead the fifth or plead the sixth? Now it's like, <laughs> or you can use you. You can plead the second, get. Joe, with the gun. gun. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you if you don't like the Northman, you don't like Hamlet, and then you don't like Shakespeare. So I, I mean, <laughs> I I, uh, I still don't get the director choice for Twisters, Lee Isaac Chung. No, I I can't understand how this exists. <laughs> I said, it makes how, absolutely no sense. How do you go from Minari <laughs> to, Minari to Twisters? And look, this, it, I mean. It, so weird. So weird. It might, it might be really good, the trailer that we have seen. I mean, there's Glenn Powell, right, on it, and he's star power on his own. So Yeah, but I mean, there's he couldn't that. even carry anyone but you, and that had Sidney Sweeney in it. So Oh, he did. He did. He did. He did. He tried to. He tried to carry that movie on his very muscly shoulders. Ooh, Lee Wellens, Lee Wellens Wolfman. Okay. Okay. 
it was Christopher, Christopher Abbott, Abbott. Yes, no? and Julia Garner. Oh, nice. Oh, nice, right. nice. I, I like I like everyone involved, but I don't see how a Wolfman works nowadays. I could be wrong because I like look the look Man. Lee Lee one is Lee one is Invisible Man. Yeah, well, very very good modern mm-hmm. take on that story. Mm-hmm. I have to I have mm-hmm. to. Admit, so something of a sequel that we didn't need. This makes me me for aren't we now milking it? Now that this makes like so much money, Franco. There's no way they're going yeah, to stop releasing no. those films. Because <sighs> I was about to say they're for kids, but actually, twenty-year-olds keep turning up in suits to watch yes, them. Yes, so. yes, <laughs> yes, yes, and they keep making millions, hundreds of billions. Yeah, hundreds and hundreds of millions. It's crazy, man. That Despicable Me movie that was uh, not part of the Despicable Me, you know, minions. Minions that made over a billion, <laughs> man. That made a billion. Yeah. What the fuck, man? I I don't get it. There's Banana. another Five Nights at Freddy's coming out. Oh, God. Of course. Another Five Nights at Freddy's coming out. I mean, it's made money, so there's that. Let's go. Uh, Evil Heart. I forgot to... The review for Back to Black. I forgot to mention that. So forgettable. I, it was fine. It was fine. It's not talk about <laughs> it. uh, and I heard a lot of good stuff about this one, The Wild Robot. Wild with Robots. Uh, Nyong'o. heard Nyong'o. a lot of good stuff about that. Uh, John Wick presents Ballerina. So um, some footage for Ballerina as well. Yeah, which... Wick presents man. apparently he came up uh, on stage, so uh, he, he, okay, guess. at least, and he's going to be appearing as well in, in the movie. No, this is Michael. the actor, this, this is not this is not Michael Jackson, this is yeah, yeah, it's another it's note nephew, over there as well. Nephew, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. The Antoine Fuqua directing that, Fuqua. okay, yeah, it's from the producers that made Bohemian Rhapsody, and from what I've heard from people uh, that saw the footage, it also does not go into any kind of depth surrounding any kind of CD parts about the person it is portraying, and it will probably make a billion dollars. That's what that was. That was what <laughs> people's opinion of this trailer was. Is it a vol? It, it avoids any of the controversy, all of it, and it is just a celebration of like a moment in time, and it will make a lot of money. Because people will go it watch. will make a lot of money. Uh, whitewashed, excuse the fucking pun. Uh, sorry, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Good Fortune, which is a movie I remember nothing about. I heard some commentary about it. Apparently, uh, there's a Trogan in it. That's pretty much it. Um, uh, 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 sorry, then, sorry. talking about Highlander and the Minister. I'm, next, I'm looking forward to this one Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. I'm not, it's from Guy Ritchie. No, <laughs> I like Guy Ritchie, man. I like Guy Ritchie. The, really the, like the guy who's good at one thing but tries to do others. <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm, 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 I'm hating a lot today. <laughs> yeah, <it's> true. <laughs> Borderlands. Oh, you can hate on this, Joe. You can uh, hate ba- on Borderlands. Baby's, oh my God. God. Baby's first Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> and that's what I heard. That's the commentary I heard about the footage of Borderlands. It's like literally Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy, but just not as good. <laughs> From Eli Roth, e- overrated director who's friends with Tarantino, so he keeps getting jobs. <laughs> Live action Naruto adaptation. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now you see, now you see me three. <laughs> there it is. Then there's Captain America, Brave New World. And mm-hmm. Deadpool and Wolverine, some some footage from that. No one was the Captain America Brave New World footage apparently was quite lukewarm. The reaction from what I've heard. Average at best. Um yeah, and, even, said, even, and even Anthony Mackie looks like, ah, can I? Can yeah, I he, even person? he looks like he does not give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, Deadpool and Wolverine is Deadpool and Wolverine. We know what we're getting there. We don't really need need yep. to hear more about that. I and mean, it's Sean Levi. It's probably going to be quite funny because there's two funny actors on stage, but it's going to be a very, very, very on the nose, poorly directed film because it's is Sean this Levi. The Rock trying it. to revive his acting career after he was kicked out of DC by James Gunn. Yep. This is The Rock. What what was the quote quote from The Rock? He's going to change the oh my he's lord. Going to, he's going to revive the DCEU. He had said, but there was a specific quote. He's going to change the power, something power. At oh, the DC. power dynamic or something. Power dynamic, something like that. Yeah, it's gonna be him and Henry Cavill. Yeah. He changed yeah. it by getting kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and Henry getting Henry Cavill kicked out as well because they have the same yeah. agent. <laughs> Technically, he yeah. was right. <laughs> <laughs> yep, he did. But thank, at least now we have James Gunn taking over. So uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, <laughs> The Rock, for, for giving us James Gunn. Um, so Moana 2 is a thing, apparently. This is what it is. Inside Out 2, I'm excited for this. Sounds good, sounds really good. Positive reactions from, from the footage for but Inside Out 2. I, I haven't been watching animation in ages. I haven't even seen Inside Out the first watch, one. Watch, watch what Inside Out, Franco. Inside That's Out, worth those... watching. 
it's it's so it's, oh man it's heartbreaking really heartbreaking this one i had no idea this existed guys mufasa well, the lion king. wait what that's, the fuck that's... Is this? Wait, it's it's that's... a mufasa like prequel to the lion king <laughs> wait who's the director uh, is that uh... jenkins oh really yeah jenkins. Mary jenkins oh shit I had no idea this existed. And then I was listening to a, to a podcast, this one I was talking about, and they're like, I did the footage from Mufasa the Lion King. Mufasa the Lion King. What? This exists. Yep. Is it is it is it is it is it, is it animated or is it live action? It's gonna be um, like the, the new Lion King movie. So it's gonna be oh like a realistic animation. God almighty fuck. Yep. This is yep. this is like you see, it's like, well, why is Barry Jenkins doing Disney? This is the exact same reaction. Why is Lee Isaac Strong doing Twisters? This year, eh? December how, 20th. So how much money are they giving these people to do this? Oh, a lot of money, because this is going to make ex a lot of money, ex guys. Ex exactly, Bruce. What on earth is Barry Jenkins doing directing Mufasa? <laughs> why this is going to make a lot of money, Why are we making a Mufasa, of money, why are we making a Mufasa of movie? Of this is going to make a lot of money, because The Lion King made over a billion, I believe. So fucking what, man? There's so many other African stories to be told. Jesus but fucking Disney Christ, how hard are a corporation. Sorry. They look at money. Shala zombie. Sorry. How hard uh, to go ahead. But Disney take the decisions, not us. Christ, man. I've been with you. They have shareholders been... to look at. And to, to, to there's, there's, uh, we, we, we interviewed I'm filled MLH. with such a feeling of impending doom, man. <laughs> it's going to ruin your Christmas, Joe. Like, like for all the times I say like we are so back like movies and stuff and then I see stuff like this and I just go what the fuck are we doing guys? <laughs> plus plus we had we had Amanda Nell you on 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 the, on the show she had a fucking very original story with Tiger Stripes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we have we have we have stories to to be told yeah Mufasa it's, it's like it's like Mufasa. they cannot let go of the franchise Good yep. guys. I remember the time when these these kind of movies were were direct to video or direct to the video. Yes, the Lion no, like, King like... sequel was direct to VHS. Exactly. Yep. Oh my and, god! Um, more footage for Kingdom, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. I heard the most positive stuff about this this film. That's the most positive I heard about Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Apparently, it looks insanely good, like ridiculously good. Uh, Alien Romulus. We saw the trailer. Kind of commented about that already. Quite positive about it. The Amateur as well. I heard some good stuff about it, the Rami Malek uh, film. Uh, then Gladiator 2. Uh, mixed stuff about it. Mixed stuff. Some of the reactions were positive, some were negative. Those stuff I heard was negative. But then I saw some publications received to re release some positive commentary about it, that it looks so, epic. What I heard was... The, li the live... They weren't very positive about it. The live action Lion King is the definite is the definition, the definition, definition of, of creative bankruptcy bruce is so angry that he cannot type as well as but they're not going to be bankrupt with by it bruce trust me it's going to make a lot of money and people are going no. to go watch it and then they're going to make uh then they make, a, then they make a film of rafiki rafiki <laughs> the fi fi financially the financially not Sorry. bankrupt financially not bankrupt creatively yes it's transformers fun. one transformers one which is animated uh voiced by chris hemsworth um and brian animated. Animated. i can forgive that because it's, it's animated. animated yes make, make it i've heard positive stuff about it from fans of of transformers one joe i don't know if you heard anything about this Keith, wait no. Keith. Keith has a has a bit of a way of Keith, but, uh, but uh, he got uh, at least barry jenkins can finance other independent films from making mufasa really though because because disney takes much of the money yeah don't don't think that Barry Jenkins is gonna get like a but huge contract. Come, many people work with the one for them, one for me kind of. Um, no, my, my yes, is, but my... Barry Jenkins has kind of consistently been like a all for me kind of. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, until like there was there was there was Moonlight. There was uh, um, what's the other one? Um, did, he, did he make this TV series, the Underground Railroad? Yeah, well? of the Underground Railroad. Yeah, so he had like so uh, good. That's really good. He made what was really the one? Oh, it was really nice. Oh my god! Yeah, with all the nice jazz music. Uh, if Beale Street could talk, if Beale Street could talk, mm. yeah, you know. So he's got like, uh, did he need? I don't know. Anyways, like uh, Keith has a bit of a point. Yes, he could finance other independent films, but don't like Disney so far. Never. Oh, Edgar Wright's Running Man with Glenn mm -hmm. Powell to star. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm into that. Still, this it's still it's interesting. The last thrown in as well. I don't know if you heard about and this it, one. Ice, ice, 
I said that if Seth Rogen, if Seth Rogen does it, I think uh, it will be good. A good I rate it. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's the big stuff, right? That's oh, really good. That We're getting episode. a fucking sequel to the film Smile with Smile Two. Smile Two. Yep. Smile exactly two. what I wanted. Isn't it a grin when you smile too? <laughs> Sorry, the grin. He won the Oscar. Is that not enough? <laughs> Bruce. Bruce about Barry Jenkins and Moonlight. Wait, <laughs> wasn't it Damien Chazelle? <laughs> uh, Damien yeah. Chazelle actually remember. announced that he's out of director jail and he's making a new film. With oh, Paramount okay. coming out in 2025 yeah. called The Shot Caller. Yes, 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 yes. Finally, man. Recently I saw a post on Twitter like what happened yeah, okay, to okay, at, at, at CinemaCon, yeah. After Babylon. So, but, yeah, so, thankfully. Yeah. Sorry, sorry to, to butt in, but Joe needs to go, so it better we get into the reviews. Yes, yes, oh, yes, yes. Joe. Mela, guys, viewers and listeners, thank you so much for watching that part of the podcast. Let us know anything which is exciting you from CinemaCon. Some good, some bad. It's mixed stuff, right? As it always is with these kinds of events, let us know in the comment section below. And with that, we're going to get into all the reviews. We're going to start off with Civil War, which Joe got to watch. And after Civil War, then we'll discuss really quickly the Fallout TV series. Mela Joe, you can get into Civil War. I'm going to bring it up on the screen in a sec. Okay, so and... Civil War, we have had some discourse about this film and about Alex Garland himself in the last couple <laughs> of episodes. And if you listen to those, then you know how I feel about Alex Garland. For those that weren't there, very, very big fan of his. I would say huge fan of his. I get excited whenever he does anything. I had trepidations about going into this film because the first trailers, I didn't really, I thought it was kind of like basic for like what Garland normally attempts because normally he's quite philosophical. And this is the least probably philosophical of all of his films. But it really surprised me at certain points, guys. Because, and I, 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 don't intend to spoil anything with what I say. And this is going to be one of the most talked about films of the year. And people are tending to fall kind of where I am, even though I'm not like this is like a masterpiece or anything like that. But a, people, a lot of people are falling on like, this film is way too political and that's really stupid and that makes it bad. And then there's people like me where I'm like, this film is surprisingly apolitical and kind of the perfect representation of war photographers that like I've ever seen. It's it's really, really impressive in a way, the way he's done this. So what we have in the Civil War is a journey across a dystopian future America following a team of military embedded journalists as they race against time to reach DC before rebel factions descend upon the White House. What you'll think going into the going into this film from the trailers, because like we know that there's this rebel faction called the Western Forces, which is California and Texas have banded together against the United States government. And it's really, it's, and I now see why that was such a good idea to put these two sides together. Such a good idea. And I won't spoil why it is such a good idea. Maybe I think we should have another talk when you guys have seen this film as to why I think that was a good idea. But again, when you see it in the film and you follow these photographers, so you have Lee played by Kirsten Dunst, you have Joel by Wagner Mura, and you have Jesse played by Kaylee Spaney who are basically they're going from New York all the way to the capital in the hopes of getting an interview with the president who hasn't had an interview in a number of months after this whole civil war has basically turned America up on its head. Um, Lee, the character that Dunst plays, is a renowned war photographer known for taking some of the most shocking but best images in wars across the world. And she comes into contact with this young girl, Jessie, who is like just starting out. She's really young very naive and just wants to get into it. So she decides to band together with them. But why I say this is kind of the perfect representation of war photographers. And it's also really critical of not just war photography in general, but also just journalists and the media as a whole. And you can tell by listening to Garland in recent interviews, he does not like journalists, even though he grew up with his father as a cartoonist for a newspaper and had an affinity for journalists, he does not like the modern media and the way it does things. And this film at times is a scathing take on modern media. But why it comes back to my original point of being a great representation of war photography is because as I said, for me at least, the film remains incredibly apolitical 
and it's letting its images do the talking because you follow these photographers as they go through terrible things and you have these character moments in between where you kind of get to know them but the characters are not the important part in this the experience is the important part in this film and you're seeing them take these snapshots and you're never really sure for the whole film are the western forces the bad guys did they start this to begin with is the american government the bad are they the bad guys as well in this there's a big gray area in all of it you can probably get to the conclusion of the american government seems a little bit more like they are true fascists and everything else but i like the fact that it doesn't take this particular side and you're seeing it through the lens of these two photographers as they capture these terrifying images now that being said as i said this is definitely garland's least philosophical film it but that's actually a funny thing i'd heard again to mention for the fourth time the big picture podcast um where sean fantasy made a good point where all of alex garland's like stories or films can come down to a singular message of like we as humans are fucked <laughs> like we're, we're gonna fuck ourselves one way like in one way shape or form like an ex machina was like with ai we're this really good thing and it could be good but eventually our hubris is going to come back to bite us in the ass with that one with annihilation is it us destroying the environment with men is it machismo and toxic masculinity that's going to take us down in the end and he does a very similar thing here where at the end of the day i love men we are fucked. i love men and yeah I really, I really i really liked men as well you me if you think i i, I really, I really like that as well and he does that again here that idea like you can come to the conclusion at the end of we are going to fuck ourselves one way or another so that is his thematic through line through all of this but then what i have to give it is obviously this is a24's biggest budgeted movie it's the biggest budget that alex garland has had to work with and it really shows in every single way like as well franco this is one for you as a camera nerd like myself this entire film was made with the, with DJ, the dji ronin DJ 4K, I ronin 4 which when i when i first when i first heard that i'm like this is really strange because that's like a that basically is a gimbal but a camera so I'm like, is everything going to be super smooth and stuff? And how good is it going to look? It looks incredible, especially the sequences, like when they're going through like a battle and stuff like that. And you are literally just following these people through it in these long takes. You're like, I totally get the choice to use the camera that you it's use. A, and he, he gets the very best out of it. It's an amazing camera. It's an amazing camera. Yeah. Um, <sighs> I'm I'm a bit trip. Uh, I'm going to watch this with trepidation. I don't have any expectations now. I've I, his, I would I've... be a little bit trepidatious, but then, as I was going to say, to speak about the actual filmmaking side of things. Now, Garland is already a very impressive filmmaker with how he composes things. Over here, he is the best he's ever been. No, I feel like, I feel like I feel like technically, I'm going to like this movie. So yeah, like, no, from a technical yeah. perspective, it's it's near perfect. The way he utilizes sound in it. And the size of the images and how close he gets you to things how tense they are like it's horrific some of the things like depicted in this film where you really feel that close in the action guerrilla warfare stuff and there is like there's a particular scene in this film and i won't spoil a single thing about it but you guys will know the scene when you watch it where the whole time like i was like white knuckling like ripping like my arm rests of kind <laughs> of like where where is this going to go kind of thing and then you, eventually you get that kind of relief. But as I said, from a technical perspective, like everything, the sound, the image is just perfect this time around. And the scale of it, that like you really feel when you're far away and you see the big vistas of like destruction and stuff like that, you feel those just as much as you feel being on the ground with these photographers as they go through what they go through. Now, to kind of conclude everything, it's not a perfect film. The script is a little bit weak. It's probably its weakest aspect, but it's all. it also has its moments of being quite clever. The character work is probably the least deep that Garland has ever done in terms of like getting to know a character. But I feel like, going back to my point about like following these warfare workers, I feel like that was on purpose. Because there are a lot of these moments where like someone snaps a picture with their camera and the film like makes like a clicking sound and it shows that image for a second. I feel like that's intentional because you are meant to interpret what these images mean to you and what better way to do it by feeling like you are down there with these people experiencing it with them kind of embodying them yourself they have enough character to be relatable but they're not so deep probably the deepest one being the character of lee which is kirsten dunst's character in terms of performances 
very good across the board with Dantz being a particular standout and Spainy also being very good, but they definitely had the most to do. But on the whole, I really, really, really like it's it's a very it's weird to say because like it's shocking and like parts of it are tough to watch. It's a very good time at a movie theater. And then can we just give like another bit of praise to Alex Garland as well? From Ex Machina to Annihilation to Men to now Civil War, that's four films where in three of them he explores very deep philosophical like themes. And in one of them, he makes a really big anti war movie. You know, all four of those films are all under two hours long. Hmm. Every oh. single one. They're, they're oh. so well paced. And again, here, pacing is just off the charts perfect. Like, it's, it's actually really sad that he's taking a step back a little bit from solely like directing, because this feels like he was like now really reaching, really reaching a really high standard of that, which he always had to begin with. Because people be honest. But as I said, it's going to be a divisive film. There's going to be people that are like, this is a dangerous film because of how political it is and because of what side it takes. I don't think this film particularly takes a side. I think it presents different sides and different viewpoints. I think the thing it is most critical of is the media, definitely. And I think it's going to be an interesting one to talk about as we go forward. But I, for the most part, really, really enjoyed it. But it is, it is not a perfect one. His father was a journalist, right, Joe? I his, believe. Father, his father was a cartoonist, yes. And that's the reason why he wanted to focus a lot on like the journalism element yeah. of, of, of it. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, what rating, he, Joe? I'm curious to hear your rating now. It's a tough one because there are there are moments when I think about it in certain scenes and I go, "That's probably a, a four point five. But there, and then there are I think about like things which like affect the film, and I go, "No, it's probably a four. So it's teetering between a four and a four point five. I can't really give a totally solid one. Okay. Okay. Franco, you were going to say? Yeah, I was going to say apparently Garland will going is going to direct afterwards Rafiki by Disney. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, Can you I would bet way? all the money in my bank that that's never going to happen. Yeah, if, if there's one person that's never going to do a one for me, a one for them, it's probably Alex Garland. <laughs> Alex Garland and Robert Eggers, those two, or those two I can trust. Well, to be fair, Robert Eggers, his one for them was the Northman, so... <laughs> Yeah, the Northman is the Northman, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a sneak, right? It's a sneak. Yeah, one it's, for a, them. it's a sneaky. Like this can kind of be for you, but really, it's for yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Good stuff, Mela. Yeah. Joe, do you want to get in really quickly into the Fallout show? Tell us what you think um, about the first four yeah, episodes. I'll, I'll, I'll give some very basic thoughts because I'm only three and a half episodes in. And then you can um, set off. Yeah, very, very pleasantly surprised. I like what well, I will say the best, the good thing about adapting something like Fallout is that for every game, the story is different and you take on a different protagonist because it's it's a role playing game of where you create your own protagonist. Um, so you had a lot of freedom to kind of like wax lyrical in a world like this. But so far, I'm actually pretty impressed. It's obviously a very well researched, like, adaptation that they have done mm -hmm. and they've poured mm -hmm. a lot of thought and love into it especially the world and the details that make fallout fallout and most importantly it's just the vibe that they've managed to capture of that somewhat goofy but really gruesome vibe that fallout seems to have and that very as I said, again goofy but also very dry sense of humor mm -hmm. that fallout has the whole vibe they've nailed that so far I like what they're doing with certain characters, like the character of Maximus in particular. I think he's going to become quite an interesting one as the series goes on. The main there are character... Some have you heard the theories about Maximus, Joe? No, I haven't. I'm staying away from like any of the news. Yeah, okay, I know okay. they, they put this out as a binge watch and I'm watching it like at I'll my own my pace. Mouth, man. Um, to speak out, Walton Goggins, I mean, he's fantastic in everything. Oh, so he does. good, man. Oh, he's, he's amazing. He's very, very good as cool in this. He's amazing. One thing, amazing. I kind of like what they've done, but I understand people complaining about it because other people so far, they're like, oh, the main protagonist of Lucy, she's not the most compelling, doesn't have like too much about her. But I'm kind really? of like, shouldn't that really be the point in like a game of Fallout where you should be able to I put love Lucy. I love into Lucy. The, into the protagonist. I mean, I, I think she's fine so far. I have... No real she gets a lot of show. development later on in the show. I'm sure. I'm, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure she will. I'm sure she will. As I said, I've only watched three and a half episodes, but so far, very, very pleasantly surprised. I do like one thing. One like the big things before they made the show was like in the combat. How are they going to show like 
vast yes. system of like where like <laughs> home in on, a, on an object and you shoot that one object and they've done their own way of doing it yes the bullet time and, and it's very really clever. well done and i and i commend them for it. yes 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 really well done really well done yeah i've enjoyed yep. my time so far mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i am just like you joe i'm so pleasantly surprised because my expectations were at an all-time low for this after the disappointments i've gotten from from prime video most of the stuff oh, I've it's, it, it, it's a good one. I mean, it's, it's Jonathan Nolan working on it. It's Jonathan like, Nolan. He's no, he's no newbie yeah. to stuff like yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And Jonathan Nolan actually directed the first three episodes. And you can really tell because yeah. the first three episodes are the best episodes of, of the whole show. Um, th it's still very good. But direction-wise, you can really tell that, that you have someone who is a master of his yeah. craft directing the first, the first three episodes. One Again, thing I, I realized doesn't, they did. doesn't lack too much. Go ahead, Joe. Yeah. One thing I realized they did, they didn't do it when you see the gulper, I believe, in the second episode. Mm -hmm. But when you see the irradiated bear, mm -hmm. I believe the close-ups of it were like a really good practical that they had built. And then the far away shots were a CGI one. And that blend, it really mm -hmm. worked for me that they put in the effort that for the close-ups, it was an actual practical thing. But from further away, it was CGI. And I, I appreciate that. You can tell a lot of effort has gone into both this, the set design and the look. Yeah, you can tell it's expensive as well. Oh, definitely. I don't want to know how much money went into this. I mean, a, a lesser show would have made all the Brotherhood of Steel super armors CGI. Yeah. Yep. But none of them are in this. Like Halo. Like yeah. Halo. And I saw a funny meme. It's like Halo fa fans of Halo seeing Fallout fans nitpicking the show. And they're yeah. like, like <laughs> guys, come on. Halo is <laughs> horrific. And yeah. then they're looking at the fans nitpicking on the whole New Vegas controversy. I don't know if you heard anything about that. No, I saw that some fans are a little bit annoyed, but I haven't gotten yeah. to the part of what they're annoyed about. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, it's it's the... really nitpicky, really nitpicky. G gamers um, grow up. That's what yep, I'll say. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> but this is really good stuff. This is really good stuff. I love how it starts. I think the for opening 10, 15 minutes are some of the best television I've watched this year with yeah. Walter it, Goggins. It, it, it starts off just, just, being, just being so Fallout, like the first episode. Yep. Like this is it's basically Fallout 4. For a game. Fallout yeah. 4, basically, the opening of Fallout 4. So I love yeah, how they start. way, way there. better because Fallout 4 sucked. Yeah. Mm. Well, it sucked. I didn't, I didn't suck. Well, it it sucked. It, it sucked. It wasn't bad. When you've played New Vegas and Fallout 3, it sucked. I played all of them. I, I, I actually tried Which to Which one do you rate as the best one? New. Uh. So I think New Vegas is the better game, but I played more of Fallout 3 because it was the first one to release. I mean, first one. Okay. The new generation. New, new, new Vegas is the vastly superior one. It, it is. It is. Definitely is. Like, whether it's gameplay, whether it's world design, whether it's, it's the characters it's, you meet. It's everything, and it's because Bethesda didn't make that one. Whether it's the options you are given. Oh, uh, gamers. How's chat doing? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yes, I agree. And, but, but if you look at Fallout 4 as a shooter game rather than as a Fallout game, it's not. I think it's a fine game. <laughs> Agree to disagree. I think I think it all around <laughs> sucks. It's not a good shooter. <laughs> all right, fair enough, fair enough. But Joe, another another oh god, what was the fucking quote? Another settlement needs our help. Oh fuck. <laughs> Anyone who's played Fallout 4 will have heard that quote a thousand yeah, We'll have times. PTSD from that quote. Yeah. <laughs> no, but to get back to the topic of the show, I think. I love how it started. I love the fact that they depict like the whole nuclear explosion. And then they go kind of like 200 years later, we see the whole drama leading to Lucy leaving the vault. I think that's all really well done. I, I was a bit iffy on the portrayal of the Brotherhood of Steel. Um, I understand why there was some criticism there. Uh, I, start, I started disliking the character of, of Maximus. But I ended up quite liking where the character went, kind of. Okay, later that's on interesting because I think currently I think he's a giant piece of shit. Yes, and I didn't dislike him because he was a piece of shit. I disliked him because I, I couldn't understand the character. Like I was wasn't getting what he's going for because he's a really weird character. He's a very very weird character. Not strange, what you would yes. expect from a Brotherhood of Steel character, mm -hmm. right? Um, so. It, I mean, that was the small negative I had, but I just love Walter Goggins as the ghoul. Like, that yeah. is a 
masterful casting and masterful casting he is he exudes all the vibes of a fallout character you expect to see yeah. in game like, perfectly perfectly um like i said the first three episodes i think were the best directed episodes and you can tell that's 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 jonathan nolan directing i love the performances i think ella pernell was fantastic um as was goggins i think goggins as well was the standout for myself uh, i love the writing given both to the characters and um, they get some great development later on especially ella pernell's character uh, lucy uh, i love i love i love the way it deals with the mysteries behind what's going on in the fallout shelters later on in the show i love how it also deals with prior to the to the i thought those were the most where it was where it was most potentially could have fa fallen where in the scenes where you see what happened prior to the nuclear mm -hmm. fallout uh, and i mean thankfully it was mostly walter goggins character involved there and i mean he eats up every scene beautifully and i think the mystery is developed really well so that stuff is fantastic i think the world building in this is just insanely good i think just the way the they build the world up and and for fans of the games you'll be like ah ah and, and mm. people who haven't watched the show are still not going to miss out on much because because the world is built up so beautifully. Yeah. But there are still some small elements like the Nuka Cola, like <clears throat> like for example when she's stabbed and then she she uses the stim pack and she's just, yeah to this new she's fine <laughs> she's fine. I love that part. So that made me laugh a lot. Uh, the Radaways as well. You'd see later on. Yeah. I, I, was, I, I was wondering I, when those were going to come into it. The right yeah, way. they're going to come in. They're going to come in later on. I just love everything about this show. Um, the, the the production design we've mentioned. The visuals are immaculately done. Immaculate. Uh, I think it's, it's it's very faithful to the source material as well. This just feels like another game, just like any uh, another Fallout game. Uh, yeah, it would actually be good if anyone who had never even heard of Fallout before they went and they watched this. They would be then very well encouraged to go and play Fallout New Vegas only. Yep, yep, yep. Please do, please do. So I you think play, actually you can play Fallout Three. Play Fallout Three and New Vegas, Franco. They're, they're fantastic. Yeah. They're really good. Don't they're play really seventy six or Fallout Four. Apparently, seventy six has really improved, Joe. No, I'm not going to hear it. it. Hasn't? No. I mean, I even hated they, it when it came out. Even if even if they say it's improved, I still refuse. I hated it when it came out. Like, I I. I Gave it like a one out of five. That, game. that game has done like some of the scummiest things in like video game history. So I just really yep, refuse. Yep, yep, yep. But apparently it's much improved though. That's what people are saying. But I mean, it's, I it's okay it when you're when you're when a modding community comes in and fixes your game like every Bethesda game ever. I actually I don't think it's mods because it's online. So I don't think they can actually mod the game, can they? Mm, I'm, sure, I'm sure people did. Mm, maybe. Anyways, I think I it fully deserves a four point five out of five for myself. I'm having a blast watching it. I probably would say this is, I would say, probably my favorite video game adaptation to date. Okay. Yep. More than The Last of Us, I would say. I had more fun with this than The Last of Us. But this is innately more fun than The Last of Us. The Last of Us is like feel bad. <laughs> yes. But, mm -hmm. but as a video game adaptation, how loyal and how, how accurate the lore is portrayed mm. and how well the vibes are taken. Listen, don't get me wrong. The Last of Us was a great adaptation. There are some things that pissed me off, but it was a great adaptation. But this, we, we know that you hate gay love stories. It's no, okay. I don't. No, I don't. <laughs> no, no DEI is his problem. All right, episode DEI is three and problem. episode seven. And actually, actually, to quote to Nick Offerman as well about the gay love story, it's actually it's just the love story, you asshole. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what he means. <laughs> story, exactly. And I treated it just like a love story. Or I felt it was pointless to the overarching story of Last of Us. But that's, uh, that's, that's such another, a bad take. That's another <laughs> discussion for for last year. It's <laughs> really not pointless, that's the, I am. Um, I right, really, I, I really, I really, I really got into it, into it. <laughs> because right. it's uh, <laughs> a long time. No, no. But I personally enjoyed this more. I think it's fantastically made. Massive surprise. Four point five out of five for myself. Sorry, Franco, you're going to say before we move on? No, no, I said I, I agree with Joe and I look forward to to getting into this as a non gamer. It was like I like I last like I like like I last minute like I liked Last of Us quite the alliteration there. I might like uh, Fallout. La -la I'm sure you will. <laughs> awesome. Okay, dokies. Joe, you've stayed on yes, for I too need... long. 
I have. I, I need. I have things to do. But <laughs> but up. but we miss. But we miss Joe. That's why. Oh, but, we miss Joe. We miss it's Joe. A, it's a, it was it's a okay. great two like, hours, Joe. I've 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 done enough hating. I feel like today for three hours. So. <laughs> True, true. I swear, if I ever like burst into like the Hollywood scene in some way, shape, or form, and someone goes back and listens to these episodes, I'm not gonna have many friends. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then, then you have to, then you have to do a multi-million project by Disney. So that that would be happen. the ultimate comic plot twist for myself. If in order to <laughs> in order to get a career, they go, you need to make a Rafiki movie. <laughs> <laughs> new new metal locked guys rafiki movie maybe bruce is gonna do it after they see son of god who knows yeah, exactly. yeah like look, look, at, look at this little horror film that this guy from Walter made you should make the movie about the baboon from the line. <laughs> anyway uh anyway guys it's been good i i bid you a, a good rest of podcast and thank you for everyone cheers cheers tuning in as usual um and always leave her Let's see. Always, always leave a like, subscribe, and as I finish see? all of as I finish all of these now, my thoughts on the MCU are still unchanged. And <laughs> yeah, have a good one, guys. But follow thumbs up, guy. Yes, follow thumbs mm -hmm. up, guy. <laughs> hey, that's have name, a good bro. one. <laughs> ciao, 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 ciao. See you. Mara Franco, do you want to start off with a brighter tomorrow? A brighter Nella tomorrow. Benire by uh, the famed director Nanni Moretti. It's a movie about a movie director, yes, it's very meta, that struggles with his relationship with his family and with his late, excuse, with his latest movie about the impact on the Italian Communist Party of the USSR invasion of Hungary in 1956. So, I can say that uh, this move, Rafiki, here I come, Bruce. <laughs> 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 so I can. This is this is one of the most hilarious scenes that I've seen. This the sequence is hilarious, um, because basically the scene that you're seeing here in the trailer is the director at Netflix, and what he does with the scene is very like. Uh, it's all it's very it's a sharp satire of netflix as well um i can't i think i can spoil a bit about this this scene it's because the movie has lots of uh, facets like you, you've seen it's very it's very meta like uh it's you could say this is nandy moretti's and eight and a half but if i had to choose between this and eight and a half obviously i choose eight and a half but this movie before i get into the sequence is tinged with so much nostalgia of the of the old Italian cinema, and I understand why. Because I, w when I was thinking about the movie, I'm like, hey, you know, he's right. There hasn't been an Italian movie as as much as there was back in the 60s and 70s. Just really made waves. You know, we had Io Capitano, yes, then there's Matteo Garrone, um, there's Luca Guadagnino, but Luca, Luca Guadagnino now is uh, is working in Hollywood mostly. And there isn't much Italian movies that uh, have rung a bell or struck a chord, you know? Mm. And and I feel I feel that he Hand of had... God. Hand of God. Hand of God, yeah, but but some, you know, the, know, but before before there was Olmi, Fellini, um uh, Bellocchio um who else pietri francesco pietri then there was oh my god pietro jeremy you know it was a really back in the day italy was very artistic and very like uh, not it was entertaining but at the same time as artistic and there is a moment where there is a moment where where he's 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 like uh, he's trying to figure he's trying to figure out his movie and then and then his his wife his wife is producing another movie instead of his this is the first time that she does that and he takes it really badly and uh, he goes into he goes to see this the this movie's final scene being shot and he stops everything 
and he spends the best eight hours trying to direct the scene himself and he keeps everyone waiting for eight hours when he phones Renzo Piano which he, which he like cameos as himself until he ends up like going trying to call Martin Scorsese about this scene so there are some really hilarious sharp humorous scenes at first i wasn't sure where he's got trying to do sometimes it feels that like this movie is is like is almost three movies in one not no not three movies i would say four because he mentions there's still tomorrow is another great italian movie that should be highlighted yes keith and i think i'm gonna watch it uh watch it for the next episode with paula colter lazy it's another i have it's an she's another apparently she has a great uh, performance in it um because there's the movie there's the movie about the about this uh, mayor this communist mayor who invites the hungarian circus over that's where the eight and a half thing goes comes in and uh then the the ussr basically invades hungary after they do the violent i think it was called the velvet revolution if i'm not mistaken and uh basically they caused the revolution so the hungarian circus is stuck in italy and then there's the the relationship drama of the of the director with his wife then there's also the imagined movie that he has in his head of the old of the director where he's going to try and make a movie with all italian songs again the soundtrack here is great and finally we have the movie itself where it's basically all of that together so it tend it can tend to be a bit uh, all over the place it's not nandi moretti's strongest but somehow then at the end it it it, it took me by surprise and it really made me emotional by the end where um, um, uh, where he brings all of the actors that he's worked with, Jasmine Trinka, Alba Rojvare, who, who she's also now a director in her own, right? Um, uh, who else? Anna Buontempo, if I'm not mistaken, his ex-wife. And they'd go down marching with, with, the, like, with, the, with the red flags and the communists, and they go like, we're no longer with the USSR, you know, because back in the day, it, Italy was, a, was an aberration. Italy was he, he says a line where the Italian Communist Party is a heresy in the mm -hmm. in the realm of, of the Soviet of the Soviet Union of that time because it's true under Berlinguer they didn't really agree with how the dictatorship was going. So there's lots of facets to point out, very nostalgic, very uh, almost dumb downtrodden, but then there's some really hilarious scenes, and this is the one scene I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm going to ruin because it's so hilarious where basically he ends up without money the director and he go he and his wife go to the Netflix board of directors over here and he tries to pitch the movie and the board of directors goes like listen um, because our product is seen hundreds and over over 190 countries 190 countries 190 countries it's like what do you have to offer yes so uh, yes my movie is about this uh, this guy who's going to try uh, um who's struggling with uh, the hungarian revolution back in the 56 and the middle and the middle the woman says like yes but your but your movie is a slow burner our product is consumed over 190 countries 190 countries 190 countries <laughs> <laughs> and and she goes like, okay, so when is your inciting incident? And he's like, seven minutes in. And she told him, no, it's, she has, it has to be two. Like, okay. And your turning point, he's like, uh, it's about 78, 78 minutes in. No, it's too late. And then he gives her different numbers. So 58 minutes, too late. 120 minutes, too late. Two minutes, no, no, too soon, too soon, the turning point <laughs> then. <laughs> And and she tells him again. She tells him again because you also don't have a what the fuck moment in the in the in the movie. She says it in 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 English. She's speaking in Italian. And then she says, "Wait, but dove il what the fuck moment?" <laughs> 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 and and she tells him again because because our product is seen over 190 countries, 190 countries, 190 countries. And the and the director is just the last shot of the sequence. The director is like. 
he's speechless. Anyway, he goes out with his with his wife. They they pace a bit back to their car, and he goes, "What the fuck?" <laughs> And it's, uh, I mean, telling it of obviously really diminishes the humor. Check it out, guys. Again, it's not Danny Moretti's strongest. I feel like uh, I've only seen La Stanza del Figlio, which really hit me. It, uh, usually, Danny Moretti is more of a humorous uh, director, but La Stanza del Figlio was one of the uh, brutal dramas, a very well acted drama as well by Danny Moretti. But do check it out. I gave it a four on five. I feel I was generous, especially because the last the last scene was like almost almost a call back to cinema. A bit hopeful as well that cinema can be something bigger. That's all I have to say. Quite a long winded <laughs> review, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I, uh, he's one of my favorite directors. That's why. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, Mena, Frank. I'll give you a bit of a break. In the meantime, I'll review quickly. Back. To black which i got to watch this weekend um i'm surprised to see that it still has not released in america it's released in the uk released in malta but will release next month in america um so uh, back to black obviously is the biographical drama film on the life of british singer and songwriter amy winehouse uh, who is played i think very very well by marie isabella and i'm going to get into it later on but marie isabella is a massive highlight of this film her and some other performances. This is directed by Sam Taylor Johnson, uh, written by Matt Greenhall, uh, and also stars Jack O'Connell, who's also very, very good, uh, Eddie Marson, and Leslie Manville. Very, very good cast, to be honest, for this film. Very, very good cast. Uh, and everyone's at the top of their game, to be honest with you. I think Jack O'Connell is another highlight. Uh, he's fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. He's really good as her boyfriend, um, boyfriend, husband, Blake. Uh, Leslie Manville, excellent. I love every time I see her, her here, see her in a show or in a movie. Um, she is her grandmother, who we know her grandmother was a strong influence on, on Amy Winehouse's um, personal life and also on some of her songs. Uh, so that's all really good stuff. And Eddie Marson is Eddie Marson. I mean, we ex always expect great stuff out of him. Now, uh, there's been some criticism with regard to this film on the way it portrays Amy Winehouse's life. And I understand the criticism. I'm not always in there for the controversy, but this time I get it. Because the film does focus quite a bit on the negative elements of her life. Now, we know Amy Winehouse from the tabloids. I mean, I've never been a big tabloid guy. Um, I've never really cared about that stuff. But speaking to Trisian after, after the film, um, she told me, like, in the last few years of her life, the tabloids just wouldn't let her breathe. Like anything she does, anything she does is basically up there front, front and center on the tabloids, right? And and her issues and problems with drugs and alcoholism have been a big focus on numerous of these tabloids. Uh, and they get quite a big focus here as well in the movie. Um, and my, I, I understand the criticism in the sense that a, a lot of focus is given to her issues with drugs and alcoholism. And maybe not enough focus is there on, on how great, uh, actually great of a sing songwriter and how great of a singer she was and how different she was to the to the rest of to the rest of the singers and songwriters you you had in got applying their trade in America, um, how different of a character she was, and how this is overused a little bit, but how real she was as a person, even in her interviews, um, that is an a part of the film. Um, it is it is it is it is a small part of the film. The big focus of this film is number one on the issues with drugs and alcoholism. And number two, on her relationship, specifically with, with her boyfriend and, and later then husband and ex-husband, Blake, which gets, I think, the biggest focus of, of the writing in this film. And her relationship with her dad. The relationship with her grandmother was excellently done, um, but that's obviously, unfortunately, only a small part of the film. Um, now, did I enjoy it? I had a fine time at the cinema. I could have easily watched that, this at home. That's what was my first comment. I, I met Bob at the cinema. Um, he was there as well. Um, um, and he kind of agreed with me. I mean, 
could have easily watched this at home. No need to watch this in the cinema. Um, but I think Amy Winehouse, being such a great singer and songwriter, you're going to enjoy listening to her music in the cinema. But I mean, you can enjoy listening to her music at home as well. Uh, Maria Isabella, fantastic, absolutely fantastic. That woman is a star. Uh, I know this is probably going to be quite a big flop, this, this, this film. Back to Black, I don't think it's going to make too much money at the cinema. I hope that does not ruin her future career because I think she was really, really good in this. Really. Oh, I forgot to share the screen. One second. I think she was really, really good in this. I think she complete, perfectly conveys what kind of person Amy Winehouse was, both on stage and in her personal life. I think she does it with respect. I think she does it with grace. And I think she really deserves a lot of, of praise for her portrayal of Amy Winehouse in this film. She's fantastic. She's absolutely fantastic. One of the best performances I've seen this year, in my opinion. Um, unfortunately, she is not helped by the screenplay. The screenplay, again, like I said, focuses on certain elements of her life. I wish it, fo I wish it focused more on how talented she was as a songwriter. I wish it focused more on the inspiration for her songwriting. And it does. I, I, sometimes it feels like the, the point the film is making is that Blake was the inspiration for most of her songs. And it, it does kind of diminish a little bit how good of a, a songwriter and a singer she was. Because I think the focus was way too much on the relationship elements, way too much on the alcoholism and drug problems, and not enough on the genius of the singer and songwriter Amy Winehouse, which is an issue that I know many people had and that I had as well watching this film. It's not an easy film to make because there is no comeback here. Unfortunately, she released two of the biggest albums and then we know how the story ended. So it's not an easy film at all to make. Um, this is a complicated woman with a very complicated life with a very dedicated fan base. I think they could have tackled it better, but I could see the heart behind this film. So it doesn't feel heartless, like the Bob Marley film that I watched recently. It doesn't feel as heartless as that, as much of a cash grab as that, because that was pathetic, absolutely pathetic. There is heart behind this. There is skill. There is quality behind, behind this film. I just wish... I just wish the focus here was more on her talents rather than on her problems. One element I really liked about this, and I was going to forget to mention it, I love, love, love the focus on her wanting to be a mother. I thought that was really well done. I thought that was excellently done. That was one of the, the, the elements of the film where I was like, that's really touching. That's really emotional. And there are moments where you will feel emotional watching this film. But I mean, we are talking about Amy Winehouse, right? Um, so overall, I think I will give this film a three. I think there was potential for this to be great with the talent behind it. I mean, Marie Isabella is fantastic. Uh, a cleaner, better screenplay would have helped a lot with this. But for me, it's a three out of five. It's worth to watch. Uh, it's not a train wreck. It's not a disaster. Quite the contrary. I think it's well worth to watch. Uh, so it's a three out of five for myself. And that is would my you, review for Back to Black. Would you call it a bit of tragedy porn? Because it's it's like you, you it feels like it 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 focuses a lot on her tragic aspects rather than it the, focuses uh, a bit too much. Uh, would I call it tragedy porn? Mm, a little bit, not too much, but a little bit. It's a like uh, bit, it's yeah, like yeah, it, yeah. Tug, it tugs it tugs on on those heartstrings rather than I mean because you're right I mean she despite despite all the issues she was a great singer you know it's like uh, no, she, she was a presence, genius she was genius. really alone genius genius when it came to singing and songwriting and also before 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 other media media houses jump on the bandwagon Marisa Bella is not Maltese she full blooded British it's just her ancestry is Maltese. She's one sixteenth Maltese, basically. Uh, good on her, though. If, if you, I mean, I, again, I think, I think the voice was hers, right? For yes, the she sang everything, and her singing was on point. Point, fantastic singing, fantastic performance, both when on stage, both when recording, both when in her personal scenes with her boyfriend, with her father, with her grand. Oh, the grandma scenes were so good. Man, Leslie Manville is a talent. 
and and Maria Isabella is also a talent. And I hope I hope she gets more opportunities in the future because that woman is really good. She's a fantastic, fantastic actress. So three out of five for Back to Black. And the last couple of movies we have, we'll uh, get through these really quickly, Franco, because I'm a little tired. Mm -hmm. We have The Last Year of Darkness. That's yours. Documentary. Quick. Documentary. Yeah, it's uh, um, uh, quick about the quick. Uh... We skimmed through about this before before we go into wicked little letters. Base heavy and neon colored portrait of the alternative Chinese youth in a country in a constant and constant stage of change that now threatens the underground club funky town. Yes, there are these this uh, documentary is full of characters, not full of character and characters. Um, uh, obviously, we have we always hear this kind of sorry. <coughs> Sorry, yeah, guys. Eva. just a second. I think mentioning China and <laughs> it's COVID. No, sorry, <laughs> bad joke. Um, uh, no, speaking of COVID, this is, I think, is was actually done after COVID. Um, uh, it shows a, an, a, an aspect of China. Which people don't often see in the media. Oh, people think there's like, oh, because the government, blah, 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 whatsoever. Guys, China is right now going through a huge boom to the point that it it affects the fact that a subway, the, the fact that this club, Funky Town, had to make way for a subway shows something like, okay, there's progress, but at what cost? Will you, will you, something which even Malta is going through is like th this kind of change that we're going through. Are we losing our character? Are we losing like those hubs where people meet and, you know, and, and basically have these life affirming experiences? I said before at the beginning of this, uh, of this podcast that this reminded me a lot of Korea because there's lots of characters and many of the activities that they go to are very life affirming. And despite some people, some people, I don't know, I don't know how many people go and have deep conversations when they go clubbing. This was surprisingly many of the of the many of the conversations that were being had were very, very deep in this movie, especially the character of the unfortunately, I cannot remember the names because they were mostly in uh, Chinese. If, I think if you go down, maybe mm, no, there's no one. characters, no characters here. Yeah. Like uh, one of them, like one of them mentions like uh, how he struggled and how his parents feel like almost they're worthless. And he was he was really like fighting that things like, why do these people feel like this? But then you realize that these kind of experiences when when people talk to you about how worthless they feel, is they try to make you stronger in life. Like uh, you have to appreciate those moments where people are vulnerable with you. So it was something in the, along those lines. So it is quite some depth. And uh, yeah, I, I, because at some at some points they were like, are they are they performing for the camera? But even because they had they were mic'd up as well. And uh, again, sorry. <coughs> at one moment, he, he, the the boyfriend of one of the characters asks, like, are you doing this just because there's the camera? You know. So there is that kind of maybe they're performing or not, but other times, like you know, that there's a genuine uh, existential dread, so to speak. Again, something that I also felt it when I was in Korea, where there's, I I said on my uh, on my letterbox review that this country is such in a state of flux, always changing, that it doesn't give you enough time to discover your own identity. And mm. this is something which which I think um, encapsulates what this whole movie is about. I would say this is my interpretation. Uh, it's a bit it's a bit it tends to wander a bit. Can can be a bit dragging. In fact, I was being a bit distracted, despite it being very well shot. So I gave it a three point five out of five. But it can go up to a four the more I think about it, and because of the depth, especially. And it's also it's also a nice a nice uh, portrait of Chengdu because it's basically based in that district. Chengdu is well known as being the alternative part of uh, of China with lots of LGBTQ youth over there. Check it out, guys, if you want something a bit left field, but but still with a good message. Um, 
I I recommend it. I I was I usually go for this kind of left field, you know. Mm -hmm. Andrea goes for back to black, and I go for some movie people never heard of. But <laughs> yes, this guy, this part of these movies, part of these this movie were featured on Nowness. If people know about Nowness, they really feature some great work from little known directors. Do check this movie out. Good stuff, good stuff. And with that, we're going to conclude with a little movie which I got to watch with my dad, and I know you right? Same here, yeah, I watched it with my father as well. <laughs> oh. Wait, uh, Andrea is also going underwater again. Um, no. uh, let's see. It's... There is it. Connection today is really bad. <laughs> are, you, are you not hearing me, Franco? No, I'm here. Good, fine. Well, well, and good. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into it. Wicked little letters. Um, I mean, it's fine. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. It's a. It's a brief. How long was it? How long was it? Oh, I think it's one hour. One hour yeah. Forty minutes. One hour. 40 Very minutes. exactly. The, that's the word I was. I was going to use as well. Breezy, breezy. Great performances throughout. Solid performances. Olivia Coleman, even my father actually mentioned Timothy Spall. Timothy Spall, how good he was. Oh, it's very good, very funny. Very, very funny. Good. Um, to get into it, directed by Thea Sharak, who made Me Before You. I don't know if you watched that, uh, Franco. Um, no, but I, 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 I think they, I feel that they, they do say it's quite good, they said. Let me check. And she also Beautiful. made a film, which really another film which released this year, released on Netflix. I never got the time to watch it. I wanted to watch it. It's called The Beautiful Game. It's about a homeless mm -hmm, World Cup. Mm -hmm. And that's her directing that as well, Thea Sharok. Um, so I'm going to try and check out The Beautiful Game this week if I find the time. With, uh, with uh, Bill Nye, if I'm not mistaken. Bill Nye, yes, exactly. I'll watch yeah. anything with Bill Nye in it. Um, and anyways, Wicked Little Letters tells this apparently true story. I did some research, apparently. It's actually surprisingly very historically accurate, definitely more historically accurate than Napoleon. Um, it tells <laughs> the story of a true scandal which took place in the 1920s. Basically, you had this anonymous writer who started to send uh, insulting letters to many different residents of Little Hampton. Um, the first to take the blame was single mother Rose Gooding, um, who was well known for not being afraid to swear. And uh, like her introduction, is like just her calling you a fucking cunt. Come here, you <laughs> fucking one. Like this, basically, <laughs> it's the, the screenplay is. I think there's more swear words and offensive and insulting words than, than like normal words in the screen. Yes, yes. Yeah, I, um, I call dibs. I call dibs on making the Maltese remake for this as well. Huh? So <laughs> I think that can work. I think that can definitely work. Um, so, Franco, what do you think about Wicked Little Letters? No, like I said, very breezy. Um, it's not reinventing comedy, of course. Um, as far as uh, historical accuracy, obviously they they recast some people. I I don't think the Rose Gooding's uh, Rose Gooding's character was not Irish. Basically, the premise of the movie is very historically accurate. The fact that these letters were sent anonymously did happen. Mm -hmm. uh, these these two characters were neighbors. It did happen, Little Hampton. But the movie tries to again. This is not a documentary. This is a oh, movie, man. and it and it tries to give. I think I think the the message it tries to give, and especially back in those days, um, uh, where women were still not considered. There was it, it is around the time where women were protesting to get mm -hmm. votes. Like I'd rather watch this about the suffragettes than uh, than what's it called than uh, Ella Holmes. Uh, Enola Holmes. Enola Holmes, because the, the Enola Holmes was kind of pandering and very like attached to the script. While this, while this, the th thematically it really fits and it really makes sense, even to the point that at the end of the of at the end, when everything is resolved, Rose Gooding almost feels sorry, and I also felt sorry for Olivia Colman's character. Mm -hmm, What's mm -hmm. her name? R remind me, Edith. Yeah, Edith. 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 <laughs> Um, yeah, I agree. I agree. I think the political stuff is done in a very subtle way. So yeah, I'm very, very subtle tasteful. about this film. But, but, but that's the wrong word to use. But I'd say more tastefully. It's not overbearing. Yes. It's not, 
you know, in your face. Like the misogyny is obviously there. It's part and parcel of the period of time. Um, but again, I think props to this to the screenwriter and uh, the way he managed Johnny to... Johnny Sweet, right? Johnny, yeah, exactly. He's a comedian, apparently. He's a, oh, okay. a well-known comedian. Um, Johnny Sweet, yeah. Um, I think props to him. He did a very good job with, with, the, with the writing for this. It's funny when it needs to be funny. It uh, tackles the political stuff in, in, fine, in a fine way without bashing everyone on the head. Mm. People were misogynistic in the 1920s. Did you know people were misogynistic? No, it doesn't do it that way. <laughs> it does it in a, in a fine, you know, it's done through affective humor and the way we see it with, with important plot points, right? Um, yeah. Which I think is very important. I think something I really wanted to mention was how good both Olivia Colman and Jesse Buckley are with their comedic yes. timing. I yes. think their comedic yeah. timing is uh, if, if you want, if any comedians are watching uh, anyone who for example did the comedy shorts and you want to like watch something to get experience on how to how to you know perfect your comedic timing this is a perfect example this of is two a good movie yes great actresses like killing it when it comes to humor really killing it uh now i saw some criticism for this film franco with people saying it's like shouting women shouting swear words is not funny I thought it was quite funny. <laughs> I love it. Lalo, I mean, especially especially when there's the reveal, you laugh even more. Oh, and mm -hmm. and it makes mm -hmm. so much sense. And again, like swearing is very liberating. I mean, mm -hmm. woman. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually actually it actually proves the point that the movie tries to make that uh, everyone expects women to be prim and proper, and what they shouldn't swear. You know, it's like yeah, dogs. Exactly. Everybody swears, and. Uh, and again, it it feels more real, you know, especially Rose Gooding is like a uh, very salt of the earth kind of character. Mm -hmm. And the, the fact, the fact, I feel like the character of uh, Edith, the more restricted she is, the more she tries, she wants to break away. And the fact mm -hmm. that she mm -hmm. was slowly developing a relationship with Rose That's Gooding, it. So... That's it. That's it. Because this film, even though the big focus is on the comedy, still has some strong character moments as well. Which yes. was surprising. I wasn't expecting strong those strong, really strong character moments, which I think was a big plus for this film. So overall, even I think it's a well-made film. It's a well-made. Even film. the the woman police officer. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Woman police, police officer. officer. <laughs> there must. <laughs> like there must. Uh, uh, Gladys Gladys Moss. Gladys Gladys Moss. Moss. Yeah. Woman police officer. Co Constable Pepperwick. <laughs> oh, Madonna, Madonna, Madonna. Hugh Skinner. How, he, what did Hugh Skinner do? Because he was also like, I wanted to <laughs> slap him. Oh, God, I slap him so much. So, he, was in uh, he, uh, he was in Fleabag. Yes, I think he was. He was. Uh, Harry Hoover. was one of the. I think it was one of the. Also, one of that you want to slap him across the face as well. That's <laughs> whole guy. Who was <laughs> Harry Madonna? I don't remember Harry. Oh, uh, there's also Olivia Colman as well in it. Um, yeah, there are some there are some characters really want to slap Timothy Spall, mm -hmm. apparently the father of Edith. Ah, uh, anyway, yeah. Also, yes, oh, he's the boyfriend. Well. He's the boyfriend. Oh, she oh she breaks up with and goes back to yes, yes. constantly. He's also uh he's actually quite a, a nice guy in that. Like too nice though. He's like yeah, the yeah, too yeah, nice yeah. guy who's never gonna get the woman. He's too nice. <laughs> um, and he's constantly crying, right? In that as well, if I remember correctly. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Very like busy up in Maltese. Uh, exactly, exactly. So overall, I think Franco, we both are in agreement. It's, it's a fine film. What rating would you go for with this one? I gave it a 3.5, to be honest, because I, the, with all the performances that there are committed and the setting, because I think I there is. There's very much to appreciate the setting, um, uh, the messaging as well. Obviously, again, because it doesn't reinvent the wheel, we had to dock some points. But 3.5, watch it if you want something to, to pass the time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, I, th I think you would watch it like not, not with your kids, obviously, but with, know. Your, with, your, with your family. <laughs> Again, we're very anti-family here, so <laughs> no, no. Like, watch it with your parents, for example, if you want to. You want to watch something, you know, between the adults. 
That's what I would say. Yeah, exactly. About it. Exactly. It's a fun little movie. I agree. I think 3.5 is fair for this. I was between a 3 and a 3.5, but I think I liked it. I liked it enough to kind of like, yeah, this is this is good. This is good stuff. I, 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 I don't think it deserves a 3. I think it's, for example, if I had to compare it with completely different films, but I preferred watching Wicked Little Letters to, to uh, Back to Black, for example. Um, okay. So I think it deserves a, a 3.5. So with that, we shall conclude the podcast, Franco. I think it was a good... Solid 2.30 minutes. 2.30, Madonna. Uh, two, 2 hours, 30 minutes. And there's a network disruption. So, guys, let's see. I think I still have to stay here before, before I I leave the, the podcast. I don't know if it's still going. I'm checking the stream right now. Um... Uh, uh, Okay, he's back. <laughs> the internet today has been off, eh? I don't know. It's yes, been horrible. Yes. But with so, that, we'll conclude, Franco. Yeah, that's all. That's all I have to say. We can conclude. Good stuff, good stuff. Uh, so, thank viewers you. and listeners. Yep. Thank you, viewers and listeners, for commenting. Uh, let us know in the comment section below what you enjoyed, any of the films you've reviewed, you've watched. Let us know your thoughts about them. And if you have not watched them, let us know if you're interested in watching any of them. Um, with that, we'll be back next week. Now, next week is an issue, Franco. On Monday, you can ask your dad, there's the Derby de Milano. And Inter uh... can win the league. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't think I'm going to be able to do the podcast on Monday. Okay. I think I can, I can. Or maybe we, me and Joe can do it. So because or maybe you, you and Joe can do it. Uh, you need fair, a fair, good fair. break because you, you held the fight whenever me and Joe couldn't do it. So uh, I'll don't worry, the, I can. I'll come on as a producer just to set up everything. Exactly, and uh, I'll send you the topic if you want. And we can uh, take it from there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'll discuss with Joe. See if you see if he's available or not. All right. But, uh, but uh, again, I'll, like, I'll if, if something happens, I'm ready to hold the fort, especially after you held the fort for so many times for us. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Thanks a lot. So it's been another good okay. episode. Thank you, Franco. Thank you to all the viewers and listeners. Always a good time at the Adler Podcast. We love talking about movies, series, and video games. And next week, you can expect more discussions about more movies, discussions. series, and video games. Oh, I'm going to miss the Civil War episode where I can talk about it. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't miss the Derby. I can't miss the Derby. Where we can win the league in the Derby. That's like never, ever going to happen never in my life ever again. again. That's yeah. a once in a lifetime opportunity. That I, I wish I could go there, to be honest. But the tickets. Like, like that. Anyway, adios, viewers and listeners, and see you guys. Ciao, guys. On the Free other Palestine Day. Sempre. Ciao, ciao. <laughs>